blind submissions, where DIY bands submit songs for us to listen and react to blind. Every week, we'll bring a guest from the underground music, arts, or entertainment scene to help you sort through mountains of new music. We go in blind, so you don't have to. Blind submissions. What's up, everybody? What is up? Welcome back to another episode of... Blind submissions? Blind submissions. Blind submissions. Blind submissions, Ah, Sonny. (laughs) Welcome back to another episode of Blind submissions, Sonny. (laughs) I guess we'll, I don't know what that was. We'll cut you a break from the obnoxious. Yeah. yeah. Although no, it's so it's fun to do, and now we've just set a precedent. We have to. Well, you don't have to do it this time, but you know, it's just part of the show at this point. Uh, yeah. I mean, thirty-one episodes. Thirty-one. In it. <laughs> thirty-one episodes. It's just part of the show. Yeah. Exactly. We'll be, we're gonna close in on a hundred hours of content recorded Ooh. pretty soon here. Shit, damn. Well, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, well, it's a lot of hours. You know who I am. I am J.D. Norton. You are J.D. Norton. You are giving me strong uh, Saturday Night Live PBS talk show vibes. Yes. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm your daddy. <laughs> I'm your daddy. I'm also Jeff Wilson. Oh, Let's God. just say I'm everybody's daddy a little bit. And um, today we have a special guest who has some sweaty balls. Gil Sweaty. Gil Sweaty. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's legendary <laughs> shit. Right there, that sh- I mean, really in the in the pantheon of balls on shows, there's that's, that's probably sh- one of the top balls, ball jokes. salty chocolate balls. Yes, um, yes, which is great that Isaac Hayes won't sing that anymore because he's yeah. a, he's a Scientologist <laughs> and and he won't have anything to do with South Park anymore now that they made fun uh, of Scientology. Oh, oh, that's too bad, Chef. Is it oh, really chef. though? No. Oh, you really. know what I think we need to do? Unless you like these lo-fi vibes, I think we need to bump up the light. Just, we need to bump up the light a little bit. One let's hair. Ooh, right. let's show them what it's like if we really blast it. Whoa! Blown out. Holy shit! No, holy grove. Holy grove. <laughs> Just got on his holy grove shirt today. Not, not holy so, shit. Is that good? That's good. Yeah. There we go. That's yeah. beautiful. Now all of our, our thousands of YouTube fans will uh, see these beautiful wrinkles and yeah bags under. No. <laughs> no i still ha- i still have them make us look nicer feature oh that's good but i only have it on like 15 percent because it gets crazy like it really it oh, yeah. really you start really looking like somebody that's had a lifetime of plastic surgery yeah, you look bonkers all right look like that i earned these wrinkles god damn it fuck yeah so hey uh start a show business like subscribe 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 download like yeah. share ring that bell what's the thing ring that bell hit this like or subscribe. I don't know. Oh, where yeah. That's what they do on YouTube. <laughs> I don't yeah. know where anything is on it's, YouTube. It's always like, or, always like or, or here, or here. It's awkward pointing. Yeah, awkward you can, pointing. You can tell most yeah. YouTubers like us uh, have no training in things like space work, which actors have to yeah. do to like make their movements look natural. Mm. Oh, man, we look unnatural as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we look unnatural as fuck as the real world, but, you know. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I I walk awkwardly. The, <laughs> I the, walk like a duck. <laughs> the very first thing that I ever filmed in my my work career was um a, like a Sunday morning Bay Area Tech TV interviews, Ooh. um you know where I was the outside expert on some local company, and uh, they made me go to their office, and then after we did the interview, they. Oh. F- filmed b-roll you had to do b-roll i had to do b-roll baby oh, shit. including walking just walking down a row oh, of God, cubicles dude. and i somehow managed to lean like 40 degrees to the <laughs> left <laughs> b-roll is so awkward oh, it a... is so awkward now go over there and walk this way but look but no but look yeah, natural look natural no but can yeah. you look natural yeah. <laughs> hey can you try to <laughs> yeah, you just like, re- god damn it i'm are just you, walking here are you wound up yeah. <laughs> just relax a little bit you'll yeah, be fine yeah exactly um i'll be roll you know i we were talking about it just a second ago but uh i realized that this podcast has come a long way with our production yeah we uh you know i listened to the episodes afterwards we sound pretty dang good yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. editing has gotten pretty incredible yeah our opening and our closing, yeah, fucking blow. What you, like we really need to re-record oh, the, those. The intro, and <laughs> the, the... Intro, not the music. The music is great. My voiceover, oh yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> oh hey, do we have any listeners who are professional VO artists Ooh. who would read off a script and record themselves if yeah. we send it to you? Let me know. Email us blindsub at gmail dot com. Yes, hit us up on Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever. Um, that'd be rad, actually. 
That'd, yeah. be, that'd be rad as hell if one of you out there has a just a silky smooth or a really funny or whatever. If you can do voices, ooh, voices, we can't. So no. Well, you might be able to. I, I, know, I maybe. got, I got a voice. A I got a voice or two in me, but they're not prof- yeah. professional VO. I mean, our, our other option, frankly, and we have jokingly explored this, is uh, let's go to Cameo. Yeah. And uh, the the dude who the movie trailer uh, the movie ooh. trailer voice guy does that's ca- what we need does cameos and he'll make a whole movie trailer for you. It's pretty rad, and it's only like forty bucks. There we go. Okay. We haven't cur- we haven't green Cur- screen troubles. Green screen troubles. Uh, um, so. Who's our guest today? Uh, our guest is a Bay Area boy, somebody that we know from uh, going to see shows and playing shows and dealing with his uh, uh, promotion and artist management company, jo- yeah. Josh Espinoza. He does a little bit of it all, doesn't he? Guitar player for worship. He, yep. I think he yells into the mic for worship, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think he probably does. I know they have a singer. Oh, okay. They do have a singer. We um, we caught them a few years ago um when they snagged an opening slot on the Mutoid Man uh, Helms Ali show at Slim, yeah, Slims in God, San Francisco. And, um, you know, worship is is an, a name that can imply a lot of things, <laughs> but in but it's very easy in their case to know, to understand what it applies to, and that is the worship of amplifiers. Yes. And I'm sure this will be a gear-heavy episode because Josh oh. is a gear dork. Yes, he is. And an absolute collector. I think he is an EGC um, yes. sponsored player. Oh, is he? I believe so. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think he's he always get, showing off his EGCs. Yeah, yeah, and he's just got a really slick regular probably 25 and a half inch scale and then he's got that's like the clear acrylic body and then an aluminum neck and then nice. he's got a nice baritone too nice yeah and he's also a uh, booking agent for pinup a booking agent and i think mostly he does artist management oh does he do yeah, artist management i think mostly mm. but we'll talk to him about you know it. what let's find out yeah we should bring him on <laughs> we should bring him on <laughs> bring him, so but we should uh do you have a we're gonna play a little bit first track? yeah let's so do let's it. let's listen to a little bit of worship and then we'll bring josh on let's blast those eardrums real quick i know thank you for helping me not forget the thing that i the thing that you started came up with that is very useful to yeah. do the invention all right. Ooh, I don't want to tip my hat yet. So we're not going to. Let me just find it on Bandcamp first, and then we can do this. Just play that business. So, how's your business. week been? I know one thing interesting that happened. What happened? Ooh, I did. I went and got my first shot. You got stabbed. I got, in my, the arm. I got stabbed in the shoulder on Tuesday. Um, quick and easy process. Uh, haven't really been feeling it. My arm's a little sore. Uh, I was a little lightheaded like last night and this morning, but other than that, pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, I think they're listed under worship cult. Yeah. When you look on them. So yeah. if you're looking for worship on band on Bandcamp, it's worship cult.bandcamp.com. They, um, released a record. I think last, recently. last year, last, but summer, but that's recent enough. Yeah. Um, called tunnels. And uh, been getting some pretty good uh, uptake on the old Spotify. Josh is a relentless promoter, and oh, he, yeah. he knows how to get on the playlists and stuff. So, um, so hey, any artists after we're done with this interview looking for uh, <laughs> looking for management? <laughs> yeah, maybe hit him up. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This song is called "Paralyzed." It is off the album "Tunnels" by Worship, and we'll listen to a little snippet just so you know what we're talking about here. Boom. <laughs>
So that is the so sound. It's, it's, of it's like worship. some easy listening. Yeah, it's yeah, just kind of poppy, super chill. Yeah. Oh, hey, one other thing we should say. Ooh, which we say? As you will see us continually sipping during the course of this episode. Apparently, National someone told beer me day. told me it's National Beer Day. So. And so we've got some Santa Cruz beer. Oh, what are we drinking? Yeah. Um, I don't remember. What is, what's it called? Humble Sea. Humble Sea. Oh. Humble Sea. Great new brewery that's only about three or four years old that bands, if you're cruising through the Bay Area, when tours, which appear to be coming again, yeah. uh, happen. Humble Sea's a kick-ass brewery in Santa Cruz, so if you're playing playing Santa Cruz, go check them out. And then Sante Adarius is another we talked about with mm. Armand. Yeah. Another great brewery um, filled with metalheads in the in the back making yeah, the beer. there's a lot of great breweries in Santa Cruz in that area. All right. Let's so bring Josh on. Bring Josh on. a long on. intro. And do, 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 do. there he is. Hey, what's up, Josh? We didn't forget about you. <laughs> That's okay. I, I've been watching. You guys have turned into like my um, Monday show to watch while my kids having like animation domination. So like, <laughs> kind of get how the intro goes. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, That's awesome. And since I had the brainstorm of actually playing a little bit of your music before we bring you on, so we, we've added another minute to the to the intro as well. So we just yeah, listened like to, to a little bit of Paralyze off of Tunnels. Oh, nice. That's uh, probably my favorite song off that one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. When did that? They came out last summer? Yeah, last July. Yeah, it was very smart of us to do so, but yeah. <laughs> what, what can you do? I mean, I, bands wrestled with that a lot, whether they should sit on material. Um, it seemed to correlate pretty heavily with um, if you're a, you, a hard touring you, band. You don't have to tell me that. I dealt with <laughs> probably about um five releases that were supposed to be scheduled and oh. pushed back like countless times yeah over the last so i mean yeah we just that's the big reason we actually decided to go ahead besides the fact that we already we already approved the test presses when the lockdown started um that's why we decided to go ahead and release i mean yeah. nobody else was yeah. 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 I mean, so it, it seemed like it worked out pretty well. I kind of followed your progress on, uh, particularly on Spotify. And it's interesting that you guys tend to focus on Spotify a little bit more than on, on Bandcamp, pushing, you know, pushing people over there. You know, um, for my band, I use Spotify differently than most. Um, we've, it, it's kind of worked out well because, like, we've pushed them to Spotify because they, uh, that's the, like if I have to, and I really have to nitpick about finding something negative about Bandcap, like you really have to look. Yeah. And I think the one throwback, the one bad thing is like if people are streaming your songs on on Bandcap, you don't get any sort of money for them. At least you're only allowed to stream them a certain amount of times before they're like, hey, dude, you obviously like this. You need to buy it. Yeah. But um, if someone's checking out my band for the first time like i'd rather send them the spotify link because one they might like it and they probably already pay for spotify but two we usually been dra we've drag we've drug a lot of people in from spotify and then turn around and they'll turn around and buy the final yeah yeah and getting so, on playlists too probably helps a lot you know you don't have that on Bandcamp. oh yeah we got a lot of playlists <laughs> Yeah, I always see you promoting the playlist and asking for other submissions and things like that. Yeah, and it's um, I mean, I, I'm coming. I kind of come from the business side of the, the managerial side of the industry, and um, we always call ourselves a semi-professional band because uh, you know we're not going to tour six months out of the year, but when we do do something, we're going to do it um, very professionally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, we pretty much run things in our band, how you run them, how the labels run it with other bands that I already manage. So, yeah. Yeah. So talk a little, I, I mentioned in the intro that you do artist management and you know, talk a little bit about the work you do and some of the bands that you're working with these days, any, any uh, upcoming yeah, releases you're stoked cool. about? Um, I'm just, I've, this year has been a lot of, um, developing for me because uh, um, we can't send people on tour uh, the band I'm 
super I, i'm proud of all my bands but i i'm super pumped about it is wolf king wolf they're Tooth. a bay area band wolf king wolf king oh wolf yeah king. they're like um yeah. yeah yeah they're uh i would call them i mean us old guys <laughs> put them right hey in there. there like that black and hardcore with like like uh like integrity or ringworm yeah, totally. But now that's just like not a like people don't know what you're talking about when you're like, <laughs> oh, well, like integrity, like who? You, you know, so like, but they they got the big, you know, black and metal thing going. They're really good, and they're on. They just released a new record on Prosthetic. Uh, oh, kick, kick ass. Summoning, yeah, summoning the leech is another good one. They uh, kind of sound like they're kind of uh, I'd compare them to like Black Dahlia Murder. And they have a record that's killing it right now on on prosthetic. I mean, uh, they're killing it. They did almost they did over two hundred thousand streams like the first week. Holy! And cow. pre-ordered like they pre-ordered like I think we're already on the second pressing, and it's and the album hasn't even been out a month. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And you know, it's funny about Wolf King is uh, I was in Trader Joe's one day. Wearing it, wearing a sweet double double uh, yob outfit with the hat and a sweatshirt, and the dude who checked me out, he's like, "Yob, right on, man." And then we started talking. He's like, oh, "Yeah, I'm in a band called Wolf King." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah they, a couple of them work at Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, uh, no jokes, man. It, they're good to their employees, and I know a lot of people in bands who work there specifically because they're really good about being flexible. Um, they are and, extremely and, good about it. Yeah, so it's like uh, so many people in bands work in the service industry, you know, work at bars or restaurants and stuff. But don't think about it a, a, like working at the grocery store as a as a viable option because there's not enough flexibility. But it, it, it would appear that Trader Joe's might be your place, and they actually pay pretty well and have health care and shit. Dude, so yeah, my wife has like the best idea ever, and I encourage anyone that has a degree to do it if they're in a band a substitute teacher oh yeah like you pick your own schedule you get paid well and if you know you don't have to worry about losing your job if you got to go on tour yeah yeah that that totally that totally works that uh definitely anyone out there who got themselves overeducated to play heavy metal yeah <laughs> go go get your credentials besides the fact Besides the fact that we made a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. It's an interesting time for that because I'm actually going on our my first vacation in a year um, to take my daughter to go to her colleges. Is she, it a vacation? She's a, yeah, yeah. It'll be a vacation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going to all cool places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have and fun. You, well, no, you can't. I mean, you can't actually do the real tours right now. <laughs> yeah. They're not running. They're not running tours. So we're just going to walk around and... Mostly it's to check out the towns that the schools are in, and that's vacation shit. That's I mean, vacation. We're going to uh, Bellingham, Washington, I mean, which is like up near the Canadian ooh, border. Bellingham's that's, cool. That's a it's vacation. It's a cool little place. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah. But but she wants to be an ele- yeah. ele- elementary school teacher, and the truth is she could go to school anywhere. So it's like for that job, it's sort of like take your – Just you know, send her to UCSC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a little harder said than done. <laughs> the, the, the UCs are not easy to get into right yeah. now, at, not yeah. even slightly. She she didn't think she would be able to get into any of the UCs. We thought she should give it a shot and try at least, but she didn't want to. She's she was fine at checking out some other schools. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's uh, we're gonna our go kids get... know better than we do. Yeah, she's 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 a smarty pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been with Pinup? I think we all have kids close to the same. Um, I'm the co-founder. Oh, okay. me and uh, me and my partner Joel, we, we co-founded the artist management together. I don't. I um, never knew that. Joel, <laughs> I just thought you worked there. <laughs> Joel, he um, he was part of the production side, and they had been doing. Uh, they've been promoters for like over 15 years around mm. here, and. Um, I just uh, actually my one of my good friends, uh, one of my good friends, Biggie. He um, he'd been tired. He'd been mentioned it about me getting into managing bands, 
And uh, I finally one day I, I got injured at Home Depot when I worked there, and I just uh, I was just like, you know what? Let's let's give this a shot. And uh, me and him started doing it together. I, I came from the side of being in a touring band, and he just um, he came from the side of promoter, and we're a pretty good team, I think. Yeah. So we've been doing it ever since. It's about uh, I don't know. Been doing it about four years now. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's been it's been great. Yeah, one of our go to venues for booking shows around here is handled exclusively by the by Casey and the in the pinup team from a promotion standpoint. And I oh, sure as uh, X Bar? Fuck, yeah, the yeah. X Bar. And I sure as fuck hope it's still open as things open it is. back up. It is? Okay, good. Yeah, I, I, we we've been um, actually um we've been doing that the, we're doing been doing a lot for that room for sound and everything. Oh but, really? Oh, were you guys able so, to yes. put, put some time into like cleaning that room up because it has so much potential? We, yeah, they're, they're they're working hard at it, and um, I'm hoping it's going to be. We were going to do, we were going to be doing live streaming there, um, but we just kind of decided against it. It was it got a little it got a little. Um, we did a few live streams, and it just didn't like. We got good numbers, but it like it became more of a hassle, and like it just you know, there's not enough people were feeling safe doing it, and like that's a I mean that's a big thing. And we didn't have very many people in our room, but like you know, like you don't know how you'd only be able to do bands that you really know. Yeah, yeah. For so sure. it's like it really limited. And let's face it, how many times are you gonna as a, the same band gonna do a live stream? You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's on the internet. You can watch that set over again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was, we kind of talked about that with Jordan uh, from, from two minutes, two to, minutes late to late night. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, you know, dude, like, Jordan's awesome. Yeah, it's like let's do a song, maybe two, but like an entire live stream. Like he's he's like, I'll pay for him, but I'm not gonna sit there and watch an entire live stream <laughs> if it's a band I like. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm a sucker because I've sat I sat there and watched Have the you? game in, and every time I die one, like we I think we watched it like multiple times. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. Two songs. That's perfect. Yeah. Like, Forty five minutes <laughs> or an hour. I'm not there anymore. <laughs> I I would sit there for three hours for cave in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there are some of those definitely. Like oh, you I, know, if you're a super fan, I have a. I sat through a few. I sat through the Elephant Tree stream from start to finish. Yeah. That that one was kick ass. Oh, that and band's those, sick. Yeah, they released a great record uh, last year, and I noticed. So oh yes. I don't know if you've heard about this before. Before it just hit my desk yesterday and today. There's a Revolver sponsored Doomed and Stoned Awards. The oh, I saw that. the Doomies. This is yes, a, an um, interesting a development. Of, a bunch of people were in on that. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, people should go vote for Sky Pig. Yes, yes, yes. We have a we have a California band in there, and yes, go vote yeah. for those dudes. Yes. I think yeah, they're we, up for best album cover. Album right? cover, yeah. Oh, that's a I sick already, cover. I already I already talked to Rob and and Nick. Um, you know, we've talked about Sky Pig on here before. Um, kick ass band from Sacramento, whose album that they released last year did really well. I think kind of blew away their own expectations, and uh, and. Um, they've been riding and hopefully they just keep on trucking. They have some good momentum. So yeah, they're great. Yeah. There we have... a, there's a lot of good bands coming up that yeah. need to be that like, Oh, I could go on forever <laughs> on this. Cause it's like, it's so, I find it so hard, especially in the heavy music scene that there's so much people that just want to have competitions. Yeah. And it's like, dude, like, these bands need to be like everyone needs to be coming together. There's so many good bands. That's why I started doing a playlist on Spotify actually. And, you know, and it's just hard because people don't want to share and don't want to be as active about their bands. Everyone gets, has a very, how should I say, like they, they have, a, they feel weird about like promoting themselves. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. one of the I, I it's a pet peeve of mine but i hate the whole shameless self-promotion thing it's like 
dude, you should be. If, if you're not going to promote your band, yeah, if you're not going to promote yourself and what you're doing, if you're not that proud of it, and like, you know, come on, like, that's what we're doing it for. And I, I wish more people would just be more like, go share things. And yeah. and if anybody it, wants that, that's how things, that's how people get on the big playlist on Spotify is when you have more shares on like social media and people are sharing your content and doing that stuff, the curators pay attention. And that's how you get, you know, like that we're on the doom and sludge playlist and the new metal playlist. And it just boosted us like crazy. Yeah. I can imagine. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a know. weird, there's a bunch of different mentalities floating around and, uh, in, he- in heavy music in general. And I, th- I feel like kind of the sub scene that we're in is real collaborative and sharing and open. Um, but man, you get into some of these heavily gatekeeped scenes and it's, uh, oh. it's ugly trying to be a black. Tell me, I grew up in the hardcore scene. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hardcore gatekeepers. Yeah. It, it's like, I never saw any reason not to work with and talk to and, you know, play with whoever it's like, and it's fun. And, you know, over the, over the years, I've made lists of people that I won't work with again or won't play with again or won't run shows for, but, but for the most part, man, I just, I'm just happy. I feel far between. I'm a, I'm a fan. And I think most of us are like kind of fans first, honestly. And so I'm just stoked half the time when I'm playing a show, I'm, I'm stoked to see the other bands play. Like, yeah, I, 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 I like that's a big thing with our community is that um, our bands sound nothing alike, and yet playing a show together, it, it makes sense still. Yeah. And it's like, it's enjoyable because it's like you don't have the same like band, like, there's not the same sound. You're not <laughs> listening to the same song like five hours a night. No, oh, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd go oh, fucking God. nuts. <laughs> like, they could be like, uh, like I do I, go nuts. I, I love, I love, loved past tense, but still love Beastmaker, right? Which is Trevor Trevor Church's band prior to Haunt. But if Beastmaker was headlining, I love Trevor. Yeah, if Beastmaker was headlining a show and the and the promoter booked four other Sabbath worship bands, I'd eat the barrel of a gun. You know what I mean? Like, I just, it's it's like, I could, even one more, I think, honestly, would be too much. Like, like give me yeah. something, give me something I mean, else. Yeah, give me anything else. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's why, like, it's funny uh, yeah, i i i love i love doom as well but i i am more i'm definitely more in i know my my band is more of a we're more into like post metal stuff and yeah, i was gonna ask just, when you guys would sort of sort of um, where you think you fit the the most because i mean I, I hear there's like a, there is there's, there's like there's definitely those hardcore influences within your band well, but then it's like there's also like sludge and metal when core. we started when we started we decided that we just wanted we wanted to just call ourselves a heavy band we wanted to be able to play any show we wanted i, I mean we actually had like we had like doomy and sludge parts in our stuff from our demo but we had no there was not a single time in our heads that we thought we would ever be playing a doom show <laughs> yeah yeah and our, our second show was with weed eater <laughs> there you go and to me that but totally like, makes sense i can tell you guys yeah. with with weed eater and mostly like if someone says hey do you want to play with weed eater the answer is yes no matter yeah. What, yeah, exactly <laughs> no matter what you play yes. you, no, no matter yes exactly because um because you because i'll tell you if there's one thing that you can guarantee playing with weed eater it's great just to have a, a dixie story oh yeah and that's oh, yeah. and that's even if it's a shitty show that's worth it so, yeah so do you have a dixie story <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so we our first time we played with them our like our second show in santa cruz and then uh they were when they came back here they asked us to play with them in la and so we're like yeah let's go down let's go down and play with them in la because it was a blast the first time and we get there and like we're just kind of chilling and they came in with 
all these merch tubs. I, I mean, I, there had to be nine of them, like way more than you would think for a play in like a 200 cap venue or whatever it was. And like, we were already worried because uh, Converge was playing the same night, like five minutes away. Oh, no. Oh, damn. <laughs> so the promoter literally was like, okay, if you have a ticket to come see, if you have a ticket to see Converge, you can come in for free after. Because Converge, it was like on one of those tours where Converge was not, it wasn't a headliner. It was there playing with some weird lineup. But uh, so we're sitting there and they keep hauling this stuff in. I'm like, shit, dude, you guys got a ton of merch this time. And they're like, oh no, they, and they so they crack open the the tubs and it's like bottles of Jim Beam. <laughs> and then like, and then like they opened another one and it was like bags of weed. <laughs> and I I mean bags of weed. And like so we're saying like, oh, this is gonna be a t- uh, is this gonna be a typical weed eater this night? Is gonna be or a or show, <laughs> or is this gonna be a show or what? So like, you know, I don't know if you guys have played with Weed Eater or seen them. I've seen, seen them and met Dixie, but haven't played with them. But yeah, I don't know how anybody could play bass and sing for an hour and a half and drink that much Jim oh. Beam. Jesus oh, dude. Christ! I watched him at Psycho the year they played the pool party. Drain. You mean like, every year at Psycho? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, they were they were rescued the second time we saw them when, when somebody else backed out last minute. But the f- the first year, oh man, I have video of that first year when there was a dude in the pit in a shark costume. It was like <laughs> I was super stoned, and it was just like the weed eater was so fucking loud and so good. And then there was just like a shark in the pit circling, and I was just like, <laughs> "This is the best, man." I don't know if life is ever going to get better than like this moment right here. But he killed an entire fifth before they even played their set and he was still sitting at the circle bar at one o'clock in the morning talking to people holding court and talking talking to people and then he and and then he pours it in like cough syrup for when they're playing on stage like he pour does the jim bean and cough syrup thing because it's because it's better for his voice yeah yeah Yeah, because if you get that much like i thought that's how you got sweet singing voice of his (laughs) I thought that's how he got his voice was the whip. Yeah. 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 That's like some but redneck so, redneck lean, right? Isn't that so, yeah, right? So we're like we're like play, we play and like everyone's doing their thing and he like he wanted to know if we were gonna party that night with them. And we're like, Well, we gotta drive to Santa Cruz tomorrow or tonight to get to the, you know, cause there was a, a next night was in Santa Cruz and he was like, Oh yeah, we do too. We got our, you know, we got our, but we got a driver. <laughs> yeah, <but> we don't. <laughs> oh, we don't. And like, so we're like raging. We're just like partying with these dudes to like four in the morning. Oh. And he's like, and then we're, so we're like, dude, like what the hell? Like how do they do this? These guys are like, I mean, they're, all, they're a good they're older than we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and That's then so we, we're like, finally, like we had one guy that was ready to drive. So we start driving back and we get there, we get to the catalyst the next day. And Dixie's like, Hey guys, man, I, I saw we all had the bell. So early. We got a party tonight. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are levels. <laughs> to party oh my God. when it comes to being in a band and being on the road there are absolutely levels and i'm i'm usually not at at that not le- at that at level that level no i can't do it i i uh, man i i i have to do too much of the business but i mean usually we get to have a pretty good time but yeah, yeah. dixie's a whole nother level i mean unless you're going to like if you see like a you know, Bongzilla can bring it yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah, that's that might, funny. That might be the that might be the only other. Well, I remember when you guys opened for the uh, for that Mutoid Man show, uh, which you're wearing the shirt. Um, 
Oh yeah. And, and I, I think we hadn't met and that was the first time we'd met. Uh, and I don't know if you remember it because I came up to you and I introduced myself and we were talking and you're, you look me straight in the eye and you're like, I'm so fucking high right now. I'm not going to remember this tomorrow. <laughs> merch, okay, cool. That's no. <laughs> merch etiquette right there, man. I guess the fact that I like, uh, I, uh, maybe because I smoked the whole time we're playing too. I, yeah. I, I don't. That was a kind of a different animal back then. Though like, I, we kind of, well, no, I guess not. Cause we still do the same thing, but. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like uh, our stuff now is a little more it, it is a little more riff oriented but I have to like pay more attention to like changing sounds and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm the only guitar yeah. player now so it's a uh, have a you little gotta, more Yeah, you got to cover all that sh- all all of that shit and not and be on the ball cuz there's nobody else to to smooth it out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We talked. We talked to jo- we talked to John from Moontooth. He was like, you know, they think like there's an acceptable level of fucking up on stage in service of putting on a good show, but it's like it's definitely a line that you have. There's a, there's a ratio have, of, of of good of showmanship <laughs> and missed notes. Yeah, that's and they what have to like balance each other out. <laughs> <laughs> we. This was probably not the. I, I probably I felt a little bad for anyone that came to see us, but we had a show and it, it was one of our first headlining shows at the Blue in Santa Cruz. Oh yeah. And um, our whole idea was to see how far we can go before we couldn't play. Oh. <laughs> hmm. But that was an interesting experience. Yeah. It was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, to say it, the least. You know, it could be expected too at the Blue Lagoon. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> And what was going on in the other room? Yeah, <laughs> was it the goth night? Uh, you, were, you weren't the yes, weirdest we thing. We played a goth night. It was a, yeah. it was on the goth night. On the yeah. goth night, yeah. We did have to sleep a little bit in the van before we came home. Yeah, so. yeah. I I did I did one tour with with one person in the band who was out of control, wasted, and uh, it's so stressful. Like I I just can't I can't do it at all. Having to wake somebody up to, like. 20 minutes before you have to get on stage and play and just hope to God that like everything goes right is not fun at all. Not, yeah. not for See, me. We, I ha- like- we have a vegan straight edge singer. So you always, nice. got, you always, you've got always the, got a, the, a driver. The driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it, bands. <laughs> yeah. Well, tr- tr- Troy and Carl are both dry, but they'll smoke the shit out of some weed and get weird. Yeah. So that's how most, that's how most of us are. We like hardly anybody in our band really, we don't really drink that much. So, uh, usually we can like chill out a little while before we play. Like it, I, we don't usually do like, I, we don't do any of like the edible things before we play or anything. So it lasts forever. Yeah. So usually we're pretty good by the time we have to go. By the time it's time to go home. Yeah, yeah that's I, good. I I have to be. And if not, re- we got a vegan straight edge singer. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I have to be relatively straight because I do a lot of stuff. On I do a I like a lot of knobs and a lot of buttons and a lot of stuff. And your little hands synthesizer and the, thing now. And, yeah, and the synth, and so it's like. You, the I have like night terrors thinking about being like wasted and having to go up and operate all that shit. I think I would probably. No, I'm not ready yet. I think I would probably just unplug everything, even my pedal board, and just like crank the dirt on my amp and just play, <laughs> and not worry about any, and not worry about why, the rest of it. Why do you think we play so loud? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People don't know if you fuck up if they can't hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is true. So you mentioned, um, and I know you came up in like the hardcore scene uh, in Santa Cruz, uh, right? Um, like, how did you get in? How did you get into music? What was your intro? Like, did you have parents that were into it? Did you just sort of fall in with the wrong crowd? <laughs> the right crowd? I've always been in with the wrong crowd. <laughs> uh, mostly, uh, I, I had my dad played drums when I was little. But he stopped very at a very early, at, a, at a very young age of mine, and then my cousin played guitar for. He's actually the one that taught me how to. He, he taught me how to start playing guitar. And then uh, I I was into I rode bikes for I rode bikes forever. 
like, like BMX. BMX. Yeah. yeah, like BMX. You and Dirk. Um, <laughs> yeah, you you and Dirk. Dirk, stand, Phil. dirt jumping, dirt jumping, and I mean, just a lot of that stuff, racing, and a lot of that stuff, and, and that's probably a lot of like uh, punk and metal, like kind of like yeah, the, where I kind of discovered yeah, where I kind of discovered, you know, punk rock and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And we had a, at the time, you know, Santa Cruz didn't have the crazy good scene when at, for, I mean, they had bands, but like, it wasn't quite like, you know, it's not quite like it was now. It's actually more underground then. And, uh, but Salinas had a raging scene as well back in those days. There's a band called Psychostomatic. Oh, yeah. uh, They live in Sacramento now. And uh, they actually practiced right around the corner from where I lived. And uh, we had a raging, like, punk and hardcore scene. And uh, I kind of gotten, you know, kind of met those guys and started going to shows locally. And I, the first hardcore band I, I seen was – the first hardcore band I seen was Blast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, – <laughs> Which was, Santa Cruz. you know, which I was always thought was like God tier because like, you know, everybody knew who Black Flag was and all those bands. Well, Blast is this, is our Black Flag. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny because actually through Clifford is how I got into bands like Neurosis mm. and stuff like that. He's in a band called Space Boy. And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard Space Boy. No, but I if you haven't, do yourself a favor and Here's check some them Boy. out. Yeah, yeah, they were on Southern Lord for a while back in the day, but it was Clifford oh, wow. in that band, and uh, he uh, drugged me out to see. He drugged this young impressionable kid out to see <laughs> Space Boy open for Neurosis, and since then, Neurosis has been one of my favorite bands. But. Nice. Uh, yeah, we mostly just built shows in our area from house shows to running a, you know, DIY venues and you know, Selena still has a couple of ha- like live house show venues that I've seen bands pop into when they have a when they have a little bit of a run on the West Coast and need a need a date. Yeah, I mean, Selena's a scene used to be rad, uh, but like now it's just kind of <sighs> As sad as it is, I wouldn't like I, I wouldn't feel confident in doing shows here anymore. Yeah. Because so many people just moved away. And like with worship, like we just consider our, a Santa Cruz show our hometown shows now. Yeah. And I mean, that's where I mean I basically most of my time growing up in punk and hardcore, I was going to shows in the Bay Area. And every once in a while when we got something good in Santa Cruz, I'd go but it was mostly driving my ass to San Francisco or more like getting brought to San Francisco. <laughs> what our Gilman. I, I, I got to say, I think that I think the advent of the radius is what created a scene in Santa Cruz because it's in the perfect spot to, <laughs> to take shows from bands that are passing through the Bay area that play San Francisco or Oakland. And it's also well, why San Jose is such a fucking pain in the ass to run shows in. Well, you know, um, Santa Cruz had a rage and like all the local bands in Santa Cruz have always done really well there. So like in the nineties when like, I mean the nineties was kind of more when I was, you know, I was obviously like involved way more by that time, by like the mid nineties and like, you know, bands like good riddance and yeah. fury 66, they're like, I mean, those are our, our hometown heroes, you know? And, like, so I, to see those bands, like, they were, like, I, especially, like, Good Riddance. Like, they were, like, we kind of take for granted how big Good Riddance is until you see them, like, when you see them in, in like, another city, and you're, like, oh, <laughs> man, Good Riddance is huge. And we're just yeah. like, oh no, we just had coffee with Russ the other day when we were walking down Pacific. 
No, Good Riddance is huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so many and, of those bands like that that like the hometown well, no crowd use for probably name. appreciates were, them the least, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like no use for a name. They were. Yeah. They were they were huge and like, I what they played the Cactus Club in San Jose maybe. Yeah, if they were lucky. I mean, I, I'll I'll repeat myself, but that my first band. Um, our drummer was was Rory from No Use for Names, little brother, the drummer for No Use for a Name. So oh, we nice. so we practiced at their mom's house where No Use for <laughs> where No Use for a Name used to practice too. So she's like fully broken in. We're set up in the living room screaming into microphones, and she's just like putting dishes away. And we're like this this is normal. This is this is how things go here. This is life at the No Use see, for a Name household. Yeah. They don't like No Use for a Name. See, they they used to play small clubs and in san jose but when they came to santa cruz they, they would play the vets on there'd be six seven hundred people yeah wow and it's just like going over that going over the hill they were just yeah. like i mean but they were always playing with like fury 66 or good riddance or another yeah. like lag wagon used to come up a lot because they're right from like you know those guys were from like the santa barbara area and then like we kind of got more into like i was more into like sick of it all and mm. the hardcore scene yeah and i just kind of like that was just where that was just where my heart was and I, I i don't know you know this jd it was a lot different back in the 90s oh yeah and like it was exciting new and it was scary yeah <laughs> all the things all the things a, a young all the things a young teenager needs in this life yeah. <laughs> a little fear a little fear i'm gonna go to a show i might not come home <laughs> Maybe. and that could be why i avoided all, why i skirted around that whole scene because i yeah. just i was like i was looking for like a fun party not a like a terrifying yeah. night that i hope to get through and you know the worst thing that might happen is you know mike Patton might piss on the crowd or something but yeah. Like the, oh, man. the like the environment at the shows that I was going to was uh, was upbeat and like people were chill and yeah having fun. Well, that I was, mean they got the, weird. Yeah, yeah. Sure, the, but the that was about time, the time that I sort of the sort first of, time I seen Mr. Yeah. Bungle. The first time I seen Mr. Bungle was in Santa Cruz. Yeah, and uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen. We had no idea because they were not, nobody talked about them, but it's when they brought Dillinger Escape Plan to open for them. Oh yeah, and it was my first Dillinger Escape Plan experience oh, with uh, with Mister Bungle. It was insane. I bet that, I bet was, that was a great crazy. night. It was insanely awesome. Was it the Catalyst? No, it's at Palookaville. Oh, Palookaville. Okay, Palookaville. I missed that place. Yeah, long long gone Palookaville. Huh. Where was that? Also, sort of on that main strip. No, it was it was off a of side street on that main strip. Mm. But um, yeah, we used to get cool shows in San. There used to be some cool ones. There used to be like uh, that's why I seen like Slayer for the first time in at the Civic in Santa Cruz with Machine Head and Biohazard. <laughs> I remember that tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yes, Slayer, finally. <laughs> I, saw, I, had, I saw a really cool show at the Civic. What was it? You know what it was? It was fucking Beck. Oh, <laughs> Dan really? and I, my best friend and I went and saw Beck, and it was like some crazy tour where he had, he was touring with a really big band. It was probably post Midnight Vultures, and uh, he like had all this crazy shit he did on stage. Like he had, he did one song where he was sitting at a table that was all set with like a really nice table setting, and he was just sitting there. And then at some point, he like pulled did the tablecloth trick, and it was a fucking weird night. But it was it was <laughs> you know on a, on a good yeah totally. It was like huh. <laughs> You know, it's like he's the one where I have to kind of I, I have a fairly hard rule about supporting Scientologists and really anyone in in <laughs> cult, cults exploiting people. Um, Please tell me you've seen that um, that documentary that uh, I've seen all of them. What's her yeah. name? Did that? that... Leah Remini. Oh, Leah Remini. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was psycho. Yeah. Yeah. I. But you know. He he kind of publicly says, yeah, 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 I grew up in it, but it's not really my life. It's not my thing. But everyone el everyone on the inside is like, yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he's he's from Scientology royalty. He's married to Giovanni Rabisi's sister, and her parents are like the legendary recruiters in Hollywood that got everybody hooked in. So it's like, okay, whatever, buddy. But 
Midnight Vultures is a great record, so oh well. <laughs> I guess wow. I'll, I'll compromise my principles for a night. Yeah. I mean, I did yeah, the same with the Osmonds. Just... <laughs> Not really. That was a joke. No. <laughs> Like, I don't agree with Mormonism, but the odds Mor- are fucking great. Mormonism <laughs> is not a it's not a cult. It's a real religion, JD. Okay. Yeah. You should know that more than any of us. No, it's totally a cult. The first time the the first time the first time we played Salt Lake City, um I'm sure you know Dan that used to run Life Sentence. Dan Gump. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Life Sentence. Li- yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um we were staying at his house and he lived in this old area in Salt Lake City and I couldn't believe I mean the sidewalks were like fucking like four times the size of normal sidewalks right <laughs> and and we're just talking about in a neighborhood and we're like dude like this like what what's with this he's like oh that's for the old school Mormon families so they can walk side by side so yeah. Walk, yeah and the streets are like double wide they made all the streets super wide so that people could turn the wagons around yeah, yeah we had to go there like our first time there we had to go there and they're like um you guys do yourself a favor don't wear any straight edge clothes around this around the city and i mean this was the time when i don't know if you know the brothers the twins from salt lake they did all like the the crazy animal rights stuff in the 90s oh yeah i was this was this was sort of what kind of drew me out of hardcore was when the straight edgers went fucking over the top and yeah well these are the type of people that used to come see my band so you can only (laughs) imagine like yeah i mean they were like burning down mink farms and you know they they were on america's most wanted yeah they were yeah it was it was it was crazy who do they think they yeah. are? V- Varg? Yeah. <laughs> Burning down mink farms? Dude, like, it was the yeah. 90s. Was, the animal liberation was a, front was, was, oh, it was tied a really crazy closely time. to the straight edge scene of Salt Lake. It was really crazy. Like, and then, like, like we played, we did a tour with Throwdown and, mm-hmm. like, Donnie Brook and all them, and we were playing Reno. And, like, it was, like, sold the fuck out. It was, like, 500 cap and he was like well over uh the guy biggie that he's like he's like a a manager now he manages like every time i die and terror mm-hmm. and between gotcha. the barrier and me he manages all those bands he was tming the tour and he, he we always make fun we always made fun of him because he'd always bring his clicker but i mean it's smart so he'd bring his clicker and click everybody that paid coming through the door and they tried to short they only wanted to pay the headliner well, I don't know if you've ever seen Donnie Brook yeah. or heard that name, heard the band. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Let's just say they are the wrong band to fuck over. <laughs> yeah, they're like war- their name Absolutely is a warning. Wrong yeah, band. the name is a warning. The name is a warning. <laughs> no, you're, you're all, all you'd have to do, all you'd have to do, is see a picture, and you'd be like, yeah, no. Yeah. So um, we. I'm sure you know how how much of a how easy it is to communicate with the Reno kids in the in that day and age. But um, needless to say, the promoter told everyone that we were trying to shut down the venue and they wanted all this money and like throw down to the headline. And they're like, no, no, they want to pay us, and they actually offered to pay us more than what our guarantee is. The, our problem is they don't want to pay any of these bands on tour with us who need the money Mm -hmm. and next thing you know there's a hundred kids out of the door with weapons (laughs) waiting to fight everybody because we're trying to shut down the venue and then donnie brook got pissed and they're from south they're from south uh like the south central la area and um and they are fs they're an fsu band which uh, i'm yeah crews don't happen in the doom community but crews absolutely are a thing <laughs> back then yep. and uh let's just say that like next thing you know there's like 
15, 20 cops surrounded the venue and we're like, all everybody's getting searched and it, oh, it was just like, it was mayhem and it was just, uh, it was just like the part of the reason like where I started being like, okay, guys, how many more of these kinds of tours am I going to do? Like, it, it's just, it was just hard because it was, my band was fortunate. We played nothing but like big venues. We toured with nothing but like the bigger hardcore metalcore bands. Mm-hmm. So like it got to a point where like the bands were charging for autographs and what? treating people like shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, crazy. Like, I'm just hey, I'm gonna, like, I'm going to pause no. you for just a second. For people listening, just for fun, I'm going to throw up a picture on if you're on YouTube of Donnie. On YouTube, oh, if you want to see a picture of Donnie of Donnie Brook, if you haven't already looked them up. So go ahead. Keep metal out of hardcore. <laughs> Explains everything. Yeah, no, I'm good. I don't need. I don't need to fight right now. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? They are honestly the nicest bunch of guys, and like they're like one of the guy, one of the bands that are like. You know, they don't even, like, you have all the opportunities with them. Like, they're, like, they're going to back, they're going to they're gonna take care of everybody at a hardcore show. Yeah. Like, if security's roughhousing kids, they got their back. If a, you know, like, if anything negative goes down, they're the first one to stand up for anybody. But the minute somebody's trying to fuck over everybody on the package they're gonna and they're gonna be the first one to go to battle for you like but you you know what like um martin the guitar player for donnie brook he's the guitar player for terror now Uh, they are the most professional musicians you'd ever have to deal with as a promoter oh nice like it's just they're just like you know the type of people that are like which there's a lot of guys in the hardcore scene they got your back hundred percent you fuck them over and that's it they're done there's yeah. no second chances yeah. and yeah. i mean i i don't i don't think that's so much of a negative thing it's just those guys are, are scary <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah there was definitely that like that there were crews you know so it was almost like gangs within a scene oh and god i couldn't tolerate that like shit. yeah <laughs> oh my god Can you imagine I, i'm in the mr bungle <laughs> crew oh i'm in the psych- crew. i'm in the psychofunkapus crew yeah. like let's have a fucking break dancing battle yeah. <laughs> that's how that would go down or, or like no i already got you i just shit in your gas tank yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was different yeah then yeah. there was there was drama between california and salt lake city for a while and like we were like the band that usually did have any of that drama like we were friends with everybody so like we our first time in salt lake city everyone was staring at us when they came in and they're like you're from california do you have a problem with us we're like (laughs) why would we i don't even know you dude i don't even know you (laughs) and then like dan and all the guy all the older all the old school Salt Lake guys, the guys in Clear, and all those guys. Yeah. Like, no, nah, these guys are Alex cool, man. And Sean and yeah, these yeah, guys are guys. cool. But, right. Yeah, those are great dudes. Those, those are my boys. Yeah, that's my crew. Yeah. That's your crew. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Le- we're lucky enough to steal Mick from you for a little while and to have Mick yeah. in California because I've always, I always loved that guy. Rip Mick. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, is the yep. heavy metal shop still open? Oh yeah. Yeah. J- JD wears his sweatshirt on every other episode. Yep. Yep. He is <laughs> he's still doing that, man, since eighty seven. I do everybody, kind of still going strong. Everybody that was on tour back in the day used to always have heavy metal shop stuff. Oh yeah. You have to. Like that is the one stop. If you're ever touring through Salt Lake, you have to go to the metal shop and Ranch actually has reopened. Um Brad, who owns Ranch, is essentially the guy that created the scene in Salt Lake. Um, punk hardcore metal well maybe not so much metal but definitely the punk and hardcore scene like single handedly pretty much created it he was the first person huh. to book shows he was the first person to like bring bands was he in, in a band? Uh, <clears throat> that's a great question I don't know if Brad was ever in a band he just owned a record store and knew everybody oh and... that's tight yeah yeah, yeah we used to play records. I think the first people we met were Clear and 
decontaminate from there. Mm, yeah. And like, uh, and we were just always tight with the, more of the, the older school guys. And it's, a, some, it's surprising me that we've never ran into that. We didn't know some of the other band, like, like you guys have an Andy on surprised. I've never ran into him, especially since like, uh, it's especially since he lived in LA too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's just funny because weird. Andy's like my <laughs> age. So he definitely came up in that with that sort of, I wouldn't say like middle generation maybe. Um, but he was a drummer. And so he got recruited into playing with a lot of those older school bands because they Every needed band. drummers. Yeah. So he ended up, he was like our age, yeah. but he played with a lot of that earlier generation of bands. Um, and so yeah. like, that's kind of where he, he ended up hanging out with all those guys. So that's probably how you missed him. Cause he wasn't in like that clear lifeless, you know, a lot of those types of that, that later hardcore he was playing yeah. with the bands that were already established yeah, and exactly. could like yeah, I mean, buy yeah. beer and, beer and <laughs> cigarettes and yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we were that. We got to play with we we played with all those bands, the California bands like that. But we didn't like we never like I don't know. We were we were fortunate, always fortunate in California, and everyone always asked, "Well, how can you guys get to play all these?" Like, dude, I'm old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've been making connections that. since you were born. No. <laughs> More like uh, these guys have just seen me at their shows long enough, and they're like, oh, "No, no, no, I know what, that, that guy." guy. What we'll was have the, his band play? <laughs> what was the name of that band that you were in? I don't think that's come up. Just so people can go and look it up. Oh, Fate Thirteen. Fate Thirteen. And then, okay. Yeah, and then I was in a band called The Wrath too. That um, was on the Super Seventh Dagger Straight Edge label. <laughs> nice, but. But but you know it's nice because he because being uh, on Seventh Dagger he still the, he also prints merch now, so you know like he's a rad dude and like we're always we're all connected. He does, he's the one that does Holy Mountain. Oh, oh okay. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah he's certainly, the, he's the guy who runs Seventh Dagger. Certainly oh, nice. have so. purchased a lot of merch from him. Yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Holy Mountain's rad. Yeah Holy Mountain's killer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you ready to listen to some music? Let's listen to some music. Let's do this. Do I get to be? Do I? Do I get to be the asshole on here? Uh, or no? So, I mean, if you want to be, be what, you be whatever you want to be. We've no, definitely really not sort of like that. become a little nicer as the <laughs> episodes have gone on. It depends. It's a little guest. Well, it's also, just the... like, do you do you want me to? Should I be like industry, Josh? Or yeah, no, <laughs> or, whichever or band, which, Josh. Which I mean, you could be both. Your your choice. We'll just listen. There we go. See, Let's do and, this, and yeah. then see what it feels. So you could be both. The first band that we're listening to is called Mothman and the Thunderbirds. So we got, I guess, some <laughs> some Mothman dipping back into some good old American folklore. Folklore in in two cases. I don't want to know too much about this, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool cover. That's cool. <laughs> And I think the song they want us to listen to is Infinite Ocean. Is this only one guy? Uh, Sorry, could I'm could be. The picture. Try not to read too much. Okay. No, there's more. Okay. There's more. There I, that that cover art reminds me of something like Dead in the Dirt would do some good old like power violence kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right, so this song, Infinite Ocean, is four minutes and 20 seconds long. I'm sure that's a coincidence. Oh, snap. <laughs> Total and it's, coincidence. Uh, their site is Mothman and the Thunderbirds.bandcamp.com. When you have a band name like that, you don't have to add band or <laughs> no <laughs> some other word at the end so Cult. that you can claim the subdomain. <laughs> All right, so this song is 420. Let's, All right, right, we'll kick let's it off. It.
right, we'll give you first. Not what crack. I expected. No, me Not neither. No, I me expected. neither. Um, from uh, like, I, it's hard to tell always over Zoom. Yeah, but, for sure. But uh, the it feels like the vocals are like way out front, and where it'd been kind of cooler to have it like have a little more of a vibe and have a little reverb and a little back a little bit with more everything else. But like, yeah, I think that might be a zoom thing. I, if I could flip right now and listen to it over the interface and tell you, but it does tend to amplify the vocal range does it? frequencies. So yeah, you get a bit of that. I, I had the exact same thought. That was my thought. I, I, and we'll see, I'll, I'll scoot forward and listen to a little bit more. I, I think the like the opening low vocals felt a little like weak to me and I was a little nervous. And when he kicked into his natural register, he's good he's a good singer. Like he can yeah, he is a good sing. singer. For sure. He can uh, clearly sing. I, I, I'd love him to have a third voice that's like my you yeah. know, like more intense. One of my big pet peeves with anything, especially coming from like the industry side of things, is if when everything is the same tone all the yeah. way through. Mm-hmm. Like, like, even if it's just a slight difference, like, and like, what what I was like, I I think they're a pretty like, I mean, it sounds like a, they sound like a pretty good band already. Well, um, this is a one man project. I'll tell oh, you that right man. now. Alex Seriously. Parkinson. Guitar, bass, wow. vocals, vocoder, wow. programming, mixing, mastering. No, I gotta say See, this I is would, probably one of the better one man bands that we've had. Yeah, for sure. I would, I, I would. The, the only advice, because I, I think this guy is obviously talented and is going to end up writing better music. Um, the advice I give him from the industry standpoint is work on the branding, because I mean. I mean, to be quite honest, like if I just look judging a book by its cover, like I would think that this was like some like black metal type thing and probably not even bother listening to it. And like actually what he does is something that I would be more likely to check out, especially as he grows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know so what I mean? I really liked like the beginning was like nice and heavy and just like it was a really cool riff. Like the tones were great. And then, like, kind of the singing came. The singing was unexpected. I was yeah, expecting yeah. something more yelly, yeah, like a little, what, little uh, deeper. Um, it kind of I mean, reminds it was great. me of that. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of like a, you know, kind of like a vibe of like a type of negative vibe to it. And the music, our, like, yeah, the music, yeah, the yeah. music. I, I mean, especially like the more hardcore influence type of negative stuff. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, you know, like it, it's like something that like the the branding. You can definitely be dark and stuff, and still have something that doesn't look like you know, it's a black metal band. Yeah, it yeah. totally it does. I almost wonder if what this is actually supposed to look like is like old American f- like folk drawings, and not uh, and not. I mean, it the it evokes that. I know I know what you're talking about, but like I that's w- the scratchings. Yeah, like I wonder yeah, if this is yeah. actually based on something more traditional or historical. I mean, he said it's a one man project focused on conspiracy theories, cryptozoology, and folklore. So, oh, well, then that makes a little more sense if I would if I would if if I read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's let's scoot a little bit farther yeah, into the scoot. song and hear more. see where it goes. I'm about halfway through. Let's do that. All right. Go back. Go okay, back. wait a minute. Yeah. We gotta hear yeah, that we transition. gotta see how it got to that. I asked for a third voice and he gave it to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on, buddy. Were you listening to me? Are, yeah. you, are you a Ooh, are you a time traveler? Baby. Shit. All right.
Okay, that was sick. Yeah. All right, he's taking big swings. Dude. All right. That... All right. So I did some dig- I did some digging here. So okay. one of the singers on this track is not him. Uh... So there's another voice in there somewhere. Um I he's clearly a guitar player because there's not a guest guest guitar solo yeah. on this track. Um I would love to hear this re-recorded with real drums and a ba- I... and a bass player who does more than play the root note of whatever the chord is in the progression. You Be- kind of read my mind there. Like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you could see like the um I mean it's I mean like I I don't think a, like a bass player and like yeah, so yeah. but like you know he he's doing all this like he's he's doing some like ridiculous riffing through there like and like where like a bass player would think would would like actually having somebody that thinks like a bass player would actually enhance that yeah complement it and make it bigger and but like the good lesson for any young bands is like it doesn't matter how low you're tuning if you want to sound heavy it's just like you're you're setting up the heavy part and that that part where he's just doing doing all the riffing and yeah. then go right into that sludgy heavy part that part would sound heavy if it was in standard tuning yep. or whatever tuning you're in and like that was setting up heavy yeah absolutely yeah i mean this is a really cool songwriting exercise for someone who's probably stuck not able to to play with a bunch of people and 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 i mean i'm curious to hear the rest of it Mm -hmm. and like i said i would i would really love to hear this as a full band uh, full band experience that's where are they they from uh philly (laughs) philadelphia pennsylvania yeah I know There's we're not supposed to awesome pick on the in Philly. production because of the Zoom, but I would love to hear this as a full band with great production because yeah. I think it would be fucking incredible. Well, just for fun, after we're done here, I'll flip the audio interface and you can hear yeah. what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. Um, and, and like I always say in the podcast, it will be the better version of the audio. It just won't be in stereo anymore. Yeah. But uh, So everybody listening, yeah, everyone, if you think it sounds good, but the production maybe doesn't sound great, go to Bandcamp. Go to Bandcamp and check it out because yeah. you might be surprised. And on that, brand, on that branding tip, like – I mean, I, I think it's interesting to develop a visual aesthetic that goes with the project or whatever, but I, I like the, the art to kind of sometimes clashing is good, but this doesn't to me kind of reflect that how dynamic that just that mm. f- half of the song that we listen to yeah. is how fucking not a, not how crazy, all. how crazy it is. Yeah, I, I would completely. love the art to sort of like, even if you took this exact piece of art and fucked with it a little bit, you could, you could put people in the headspace of like, Oh, I'm about to hear something really weird. Mm-hmm. Not just but something you know, dark or creepy. Branding doesn't necessarily mean. And I, I mean, I'm like trying to tell you guys this. <laughs> I mean, you know, brand, but I mean like Brandon, for young bands branding doesn't necessarily mean like it has to totally go with that you know it, you don't have to like put something out in front of people that be like this is a doom record see there's like marijuana on it this is stoner. <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean like it's just like a, a thing like from from like this doesn't scream like to me, it, it seems like it's it's branded like something that you wouldn't think it is, but the thing is, it's so down that rabbit hole that it's like it's telling me in my brain that this is not like if I had like this is a it, it looks to me like a black metal record, and I, yeah. I say that because it's that that's like one of the only genres where I would straight up be like I don't listen to a black metal band unless I've done a little bit of research on them first because yeah, there's so sure. many. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many like nationalist, yeah, it's racist bands peril. in black yeah. metal. Fraught with peril. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, people make fun of me because like I will listen to Cruelty and the Beast from Cradle of Filth and like, yeah, this is awesome. Well, that's not real black metal. I don't oh. care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. care. 
but yeah so i mean that's why i kind of do that because i mean there's i know there's a lot of people like me that will like only listen to a black metal band if they've done some research on them if they got yeah, yeah I mean, and and the other thing about branding is like it, even if you remove the commercial side of it like you're trying to do two things you're trying to draw people in and give them however possible some kind of sense of what it is they're about to hear just like when you do a book cover yeah. you're trying to give people in one image like a feeling for what they're gonna read and then I think what's really important and what I would stress here is that the whole experience has like internal consistency so that like the art reflects the music, the music reflects the art. They make sense together as a unit, even if they don't look like the other, you know, things in your genre. If you're in a genre, that Absolutely. doesn't matter. I don't think that matters as much. That draws people in who don't know you. But but what keeps people coming back is like creating an experience that's mm -hmm. visual and and you know audible that you makes know, sense I say this stuff, together i say this stuff all the time and it's like dude you did just the opposite like maybe i did like maybe i did like because like if i look at if you if when you like thumb through records at the record store and see our record with all the other bands in our genre it definitely stands out because like how many of the guys have our album covers like ours that are bright and like not like and like it's it's I it grabs your eye but yeah. like it's, people are like well that doesn't look like what you guys sound like it's like dude have you not heard bands like Godflesh or yeah. like Isis or Boris or you know uh, yeah we're not like. I don't know whoever's <laughs> we're not like uh we're not like some big heavy we're not like bell witch or anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no it, 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 you, that album cover made sense to me and it what it what it made me think of was actually like a bunch of alt and heavy rock covers from the 90s um and even That's maybe kind of what i a little bit of nine inch nails that was what you're going for oh actually it's funny you say nine inch nails <laughs> Because that was actually Nine Inch Nails is one of our big go tos for like branding and stuff. Yeah, I love stuff like I I love their way they brand and another band that's like like them or not, Code it, Code Orange kills it for branding. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because you say that, and I don't think people realize this, but I have like this. I'm going to go off on a tangent for All a right, second. Let's that's do what it. We do tangent. I was at work and I don't know if anybody remembers this, but God, six years ago, there was a mashup of Nine Inch Nails and maybe like Katy Perry or Lady Gaga. Yeah. Something. It I was vaguely, really, really popular. I vaguely remember that. It was really popular. I don't remember who it was, but it was really I popular. I welcome that. And um, I was talking about it at work. And there was uh, a younger person. She was probably like 10 years younger than I was. We're going way out. We're way out. You're going to bring it back that, in, right? Yeah, I'm going to bring okay. it back in. <laughs> and we were talking about this. And she was saying, I was said, she's like, I don't know who this Nine Inch Nails is. And I said, what the fuck? Like, who doesn't know Nine Inch Nails? But she's like, wait a second. Wait a second. Was that that Nin logo yeah. oh. that I saw on everybody's cars back in high school? And like, yeah. and so it like bringing it back, like. Everybody knew that Nin logo. You yeah. might not have known the band, well, but you knew their logo. Yeah. Well, I always say about Integrity and Misfits, there might be a better clothing line than they are a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> saying. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't dispute that. Yeah. All right. So let's listen to more music, but I'm going to do something fun here. I'm going to give you a choice. Ooh. Would you rather right now hear uh, Esther and Gro uh, Cove? Ooh. Or dead exaltation. Ooh. Well, I'm yeah. gonna go with the first because the other just sounds like a metal band. All right. Yeah. Uh, I I think I'm gonna. I want to uh, be surprised. I want to. I want to have something different. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Esther, Esther, and, Esther Gove. and Grove from. <laughs> uh, or sorry, Cove. I keep saying. Oh, is it Cove it's or Gove? Gove. Or Gov. I don't know. The C looks is that maybe a C like or a G. G? Is that C? Is oh, it's a, a G. It's a G. There it is typed okay. out. Esther Ann Gove. Sorry we said your name all fucked up. <clears throat> Sorry, Esther. Um, Ann. 
This is a, we got another Ouroboros. It's maybe time to retire the Ouroboros in, <laughs> in music art, maybe. But I'll I'll give Esther a pass because this does not appear to be a metal record. I I it's she's standing in the middle of a field with an acoustic guitar. We are not in her metal. All right, so this song is called "O Creation." I'll give you a quick look, Josh. Oh, got a little little like Melanie vibes from Royal Thunder. I, oh, I got I, I got Mulaney. I was like, who, John? I got <laughs> I got a. It's a drone I, album. It's a drone <laughs> album, guys. Here we go. This song is called "O Creation." I like the sound of that too. Oh, good traveler, take I already like it. Yep. As you endure the sadness climb to a country full of peace in which you may find no part. I will not tell you to. want to put that on some headphones in a dark room <laughs> I at night love that. and just listen to the fuck out of that because that is so good yeah sh- that that's rad so, so good i'm gonna i'm gonna read this to you because you probably can't see it but this to me either she's really good at this or she's got she's got representation or people we talk a lot about the little band descriptions on Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. esther ann gove is a songwriter in the dark country tradition of towns van zandt so fuck so, yeah so drop Drop the reference there to the art to the artist to draw you in, but don't have a long description of that's all, a hell of a reference of all the different things that you sound like and are influenced by. Me- meanwhile, I'm going to edit mine in about two minutes. Um, <laughs> her lyrical songs marry the gritty, surreal storytelling of the American folk revival with the brooding influence of do- of doom. The result is a sparse yet immersive sound with a weight that drags the listener down. God, that was a de- perfect description. Yeah, down Dude. into their own depths and a bold, shimmering voice to guide them through. That was uh, sparse. Is she, on, is she on a label? I don't know. I And I, I have a feeling maybe she's been in other bands. I'm going to look her up when we're done here. I, I have a feeling she's got... Exp- Can you tell from listening, was that guitar tuned down a bit? It sounded like, to me like it was. It sounded a little lower, but not that much. Not, not that a ton. low. Yeah, I'm hearing more of that in these acoustic artists, like alternate tunings and down tuning stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it reminded me a lot. You know, the the vibe reminds me a lot of like when uh, Steve Van Til does his solo stuff. Yeah, mm, and like yeah. stuff like that, or like even like the folky Chelsea Grin stuff. It's just Chelsea Grin. Oh my god, why did I say that? <laughs> Chelsea Wolf. Chelsea, Chelsea Wolf. <laughs> yeah. We knew who you meant. Well, no. <laughs> see, I mean, this I... is what happens when you when you represent a bunch of metalcore bands and like metal bands instead of like you know. Yeah. <laughs> They're always on your mind. Yeah. They're always I, on my mind. I, I'd always on. I'd my put. Mind. I mean, I'd put her on a bill too. Like if Sub Rosa was still a band and they're coming through town. Yeah. I'd, oh yeah. Hundred percent. I'd throw her on. You know, like same same vibe, different oh, yeah. different execution, but completely. But th- completely. Totally. I would. Well, love... this is this is a perfect example of when we had Billy on, and we went into that Bandcamp playlist of what is heavy. Yeah. This is heavy. Yeah, that's heavy. This is heavy. This is heavy. <laughs> yeah, this is heavy. Definitely. Yeah. This is really good. All like right. when she hits those big like like the that the, the, that big open. And yeah. Just yeah. letting the strings ring out. Yeah, it's like that. Uh, that's space. heavy in her vocal. Her vocals, like that, that yeah, yeah. Her vocals great. brought some weight to it. 
I, I will uh, say that this was submitted by a by a PR person who I will go ahead and uh, shout out. That's, this was, that's why she that's why was, she has a good uh, bio. Yeah, there it you was go. submitted by Leanne. Oh, well, Ridgewood. that's why she has a great bio. Oh, there you go. <laughs> good job, Leanne. So if you wrote that blurb, Leanne, very well good done. Good job. Good blurb. Good job. Perfect description. We're going to have Leanne on as a guest. She has just requested not to be filmed. On video. <laughs> because okay. she, a she's, a, she's a solitary vampire, and yeah. I'm down for I that. I want to hear more. Yeah. How All long right. is this song? Let's go to like halfway through. Five minutes and 34 seconds. All right, it's so good. So, question Dude, that how, gives me chills. So I could listen good. to that without the guitar, and it would still be give me chills. <laughs> how lo- how long until she's on Sergeant House? Oh, <laughs> not long. <laughs> on tour oh, with man. on tour with Emma Ruth Rundle or something. Yeah. <laughs> Although Dude. that would be a, that would be a disservice. I like I like Emma Ruth Rundle and her on tour with people that are that are different. Different. Yeah, I would exactly. love. I would. I would. I wish at what at some point, like being on. I would love to be on tour. And be playing with someone like this, and be like, and it just be no, so non, not, not expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it would, it would totally, it would make my day. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yep. That was that's really good. Where's she from? That was she's from Oakland. She's, Oakland. She's from a local. Oakland. Yeah. Damn. She's local. I'm gonna look uh, her up. We're booking her. Yeah. When we can, um, well, she's gonna play our shows. Yeah, for sure. We'll Damn. take her on tour. There you go. <laughs> Straight right. up. All right, so um, let's do one more, and then we'll uh, flip flip through some Hit merch. the merch table. If anybody's got Ooh. some. All right, so now, bow, bow. Dead Exaltation or Witch Fucker? Which, why does that sound familiar? <laughs> um, I mean. <laughs> I got to go with Witch Fucker. I kind of have to go with Witch Fucker. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Dead yeah. Exaltation. Sorry, Dead Exaltation. We'll, You'll lose twice. We'll catch, uh, we'll, I mean. <laughs> we'll catch you after the merch table. <laughs> there we go. All right. After hour, we have uh, after hour in Valhalla. These guys are from somewhere in Germany that I won't attempt Ooh. to pronounce because I'll fuck it up. Look at you yeah. using your V with the W there, just like a real German. Valhalla, Valhalla. So wait, then are they witch fucker? Witch fucker. <laughs> witch. I'm not gonna do a German no, accent. I'm not. <laughs> Cover art is very simple. Yes, it's, it's interesting. It's cool. It is a logo, a title on a tan background, and then just a picture of a dude yeah. in a black hoodie burning a field. I kind of like that. <laughs> I like what I see here. Yeah, it's, it's funny because that tan background reminds me of um, a Depeche Mode album. Actually, I don't know why. Which is not just a that, bad thing. No. no, not a bad thing at all. It's like it's that tan background with the with the photo and the yeah. All right, and we're going to listen to a song, which I already love the title, Surfing Skeleton Undead. What? That's the title. (laughs) All right, here we go.
Hearing some saxophone. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Is not at all what I That's expected. Not the, oh. the second part was what I expected. Yeah, the first part is not at all what I expected. <laughs> Do they seriously have like a saxophone player the whole time? Yeah. Oh man, they well, have. She plays saxophone, flute, and per- or he plays saxophone, flute, and percussion. Wow. I'm so sending this. To my, my wife hates the saxophone with a passion. She thinks that every saxophone player is the guy from the Lost Boys. Oh, the sexy oh, sax no. man. Has she never heard morphine? Pictures, and that's all she pictures in her head anytime yeah. she hears the saxophone. So, oh, like, does she like heavy music? Oh yeah. Okay. But, like it's it's like it's so like anytime we're at Nam or anything, we'll like send her pictures <laughs> of like the horn section, like a row of saxophones. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. wife, wife jokes. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it. Well, and what she doesn't know, which we've learned from talking. I think we talked about it with Howling Giant. That one's not even out yet. That sometimes people will use those low sax notes to um, underneath the bass to just or piano. Piano. Yeah, piano. I, we know because yeah. the, that's on my record. Billy did that on our record. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, but also saxophone, and especially like a like a Barry or even a bass saxophone mm-hmm. could have us could have a similar mm-hmm. effect. And because the way you play a saxophone, you can get a really natural growl out of it. Mm-hmm. It like it marries really nicely. It has its own distortion if you play it right. Yeah. It's just in those upper registers. It is really grating. What like, did uh, for sure? What did the guy in Morphine play? Was that a baritone? Yeah, at least a baritone. I it think was, it, right? it was the one with the one loop, and it was about that. And it was like that long. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure that he yeah. played a baritone. Uh, I miss Morphine. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. <laughs> well, that was really cool. Kind of. It, it almost it reminded. Was cool. Give Give yeah. me a similar vibe to that church that that husband and wife oh, church yeah. duo that we listened Arabrot. to. Arabrot. Yeah. Arabrot. Arabrot. Yeah. I yeah. so expected some like D beat or something with the cover. <laughs> yeah, completely. I I thought this was just gonna come out of the gates. Like, what and a name like witch fucker. Well, like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if if you're a regular listener to this show, the one telling thing for you will be that we we're at the two minute and forty five second mark before we hit pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. It was good though. That was, was really, really cool. I, I would like to hear more of that. They're from Germany. Yes, they are oh, from Karlsruhe. Germany. I should know because these are my people apparently based on ans- oh, <laughs> based oh, on gosh. ancestry. Your ancestors a bunch of witch fuckers? Germans and Russians. Oh, Germans. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that, was hey, cool. that was a that was a really unique. Yeah, I like I like hearing stuff like that. That that was the stuff you played on the last one. There was that oh, what was it? That folk one with the the French 
was it French? Oh yeah, oh. yeah. That that dude was rad. Dude, singing in the like so the cool. lost language and shit. Yeah, that was crazy. That yeah, was there, so cool. There were a few good moments, and then Galpa. If you got all the way through, did you listen to Galpa, which is like the stoner band that Bjork sang for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. less. That was I less love for you. Some Bjork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I love Stoner. I love Bjork. No, I, love... I don't know if I love him again. <laughs> I'm actually pretty. It's funny. I'm I, I'm actually pretty picky about Stoner, like especially like more Stoner rock stuff. Yeah. All right. But like, I love the. I love. I love her vocals. Yeah. Oh yeah. Completely. I'm with you. I think that's the problem with a lot of stoner is you get the yarling, nar- the dudes. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, so my, my opening item for merch table, I'm gonna have to say, isn't exactly new because I think you gave this to me all. for Christmas, oh, right? For Christmas. Yeah. So, so I drone on and on about the best San Jose band that's gone forever. Operator, the very, the operator, very first generator. Time we talked about our favorite hometown bands. Yep. And uh, so JD found me the Operator Generator CDs. I think these are original Man's Ruin releases. Those are. They didn't oh, this is what a well, sweetheart you are. This is 12th Re- Yeah, this is 12th Records, the first. It's the same songs. Uh. Um, so, I mean, this is like, th- these are my people. Stoner Steve played the Moog on this. <laughs> um, Stoner Steve. Tom, Tom Choi from Asbestos Death plays guitar. So since they recently loaded the, the album onto Bandcamp, Ooh, are we gonna I'm, get to I'm hear gonna some act- operator Ooh. generator? We're gonna, we're gonna actually make the listeners since I got Polar this Fleet. lovely Polar Fleet CD. I love this album cover; such a cool cover. S- Steve played the Moog and did this album. This cover. is so old that the uh, the the artwork guy, his email address is an Earthlink dot com. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. God, I don't even know what I don't even know what song to play. They're so, they're all so good. I vaguely remember that name. Yeah. So maybe some Polar Fleet. Well, you just go with the self-titled Polar Fleet. Yeah. All right. I'll just do Polar Fleet. The whole album's good, and it ends with kind of a Beatles-esque, like acoustic, trippy tune. All right. The best stoner metal band from San Jose that you probably never heard and doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Yeah, they were the they were the loudest band on earth. They were louder. They were louder than sleep. Yeah, that, that was really like I I feel like this would be like uh, I feel like it would be awesome. Like people would love this if it came out like next week. Oh no! If this came out, I say this all the time. If this came out last year, it would win the Doomies. Like in when, the whole what year did this come out? Two thousand one. Two yeah. Recorded. It's in so ahead of it's so ahead of its time. It's not even funny. They didn't. They didn't even know it at at the time. What they were like. What they were creating. I can't believe how much Mitchell and Lucas sound the same. I know. So this is. <laughs> so that was another one of my merch items that I didn't bring. But so the singer is a guy named Mitchell French, 
um, who, uh, you know, is a bit of a local legend in the, in the Bay area. And, uh, his son Lucas and him had a band called burn the insects that, uh, that, um, kind of did, did some stuff a few years ago. And then Lucas is now out on his own as a laser beam and the songs that he's been releasing, he's about to drop a record, um, have been getting a really killer reception, but yeah, M- Mitchell and Lucas sound, uh, identical lucas has two god i've heard laser beam yeah so you've heard so lucas has two godparents one is our guitar player carl and the other is matt pike <laughs> <laughs> well he, he's poor guy this album. The, <laughs> yeah. the 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 poor thanks guy. are frank kozik yeah of because course. man's ruined because obviously man's ruined. and matt pike <laughs> yeah yeah the, because um, it's yeah, matt I mean, pike yeah, because you know, Lu- it's Matt Pike. Well, Lucas grew up learning how to play guitar from Carl and Matt. Essentially, that's funny. So he's that kid. That kid's a, is a wizard, and he's gonna do something. So, anyways, do this, it, Lucas. I mean, this record has atmospheric insect. The launch. There's a song called "Acquaintance of Natherack." <laughs> I mean, tell me you don't. Want, tell me you don't want to. Fucking I want to be acquaintance of Natherack. <laughs> acquaintance of Natherack. I'll, I'll acquaint. I'll acquaint them. Yeah, I mean, they're just. There are more riffs in one song than there are in like ten songs from other bands that are just fucking super tasty. Yeah, so, anyways, nice. So that's my that's my merch table. I got the the that's like great. original EP and then the full length Polar Fleet in CD form from JD. That's Bam. pretty nice. First time Very I bought nice, a CD please. in <laughs> like a decade. Yeah, like they, they still make these. <laughs> they do. Yeah. What, do you have anything? You have some guitars no, to show off. Funny. I can show off a guitar that I only got like a little while ago. Yeah, let's let's see it. All right, so are you an EGC like sponsored endorsed player? Yeah. So so, so make everyone jealous. This is mm-hmm. my newest. Oh damn! This is, is my newest baritone? one. No, this is the the regular scale. The regular. So the clear ones. The yeah. Baritone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That thing's gorgeous, man. It is. You know what? They are amazing instruments. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. Like my daughter and I were going to go record shopping tomorrow, uh, and I would have had records. Oh, that's okay. But, uh, a guitar's gear ca- better. Gear counts. No, <laughs> gears, gears, gears more exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. EGC makes like Kevin makes a perfect guitar. Like I've never had a guitar. Like I love all my guitars i've never fell in love quicker with an instrument than my egc's yeah i I believe it they just like everything's perfect and like they've just well when you hear our new stuff when we record they've just really become like a big part of the sound yeah and like they have little uh, you had a bass with the EGC neck, right? I did. I had a Dunnable EGC. Yeah. Oh. My my only problem with it was that it was a four string, and I just mm. uh, I don't oh, I just yes. I just I just admitted to myself that I don't play four strings and got rid of all of them. If they made a five string neck, or if one of the other aluminum um, uh, guys made a five string neck, I'd I'd try one out. I'd play one. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed in having these guitars that they have, there is some unique sounds that only these things can make. Yeah. And I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a similar experience because I got my custom, my, uh, my JML custom bass. That thing's beautiful. It's the first time I've had a neck through in, in a long time. And it's, it's a similar experience. Like neck, a neck through bass produces a range of sounds. That's just different from, from a bolt-on and there's no way around it so, uh, and the sustain yeah it's the sustain it's and, the next sustain is... and har and harmonics undertones and overtones one note sounds like eight eight to ten different notes even with no effects yeah, or see, anything my base is i i uh i built a base out of a p-base body and um put an egc neck on it and, and stuff and like it sustains for quite some time because of the aluminum neck, but like yeah. there's still snappiness because it's still a bolt on. But these guitars are essentially neck throughs because I mean the pickups and heart and bridge are connected to the neck. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I have to make my guitars stop 
sustaining pretty much, <laughs> which turn, I like. Turn it off. Nah, we don't do that stuff. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> we don't need to get crazy and turn it off. Well, yeah, and, no, go crazy. Nothing like and, crazy like that. And that's what made me even happier that I had him put that momentary kill switch on there because when you can sustain forever, it's really fun to be able to play with turning the the signal on and off, like right on the instrument and let it ring. <laughs> I've been I've been in the studio by myself a few times in the last couple of weeks just making noise with it and it it's it's bonkers. I've been working yeah. on sustain with this new Akai that I got. Oh yeah, are you you already showed that off? Yeah. Hey JD, I, I just I, I needed to be part of the conversation. I got him so. a MIDI controller for <laughs> for his birthday so he can make beats and shit. He already sent me two. Oh, yeah, nice. he already sent me two. You better look out, DJ JD. Well, that's not a DJ. I have a no. serious issue with no, that. It's not a DJ. If you're making music, <laughs> you're not a DJ. You're a producer. Yeah, you're a musician. You're a musician. Producers. Hey, people buy those packs for a lot. Of, like you can sell like six beats for like 150 bucks pretty easily if you make them good. Yeah, see that? I'll yeah. make some beats. Make some beats and yeah. throw them up on the beat market places. <laughs> yeah, beat market. You have anything? Yeah. Uh, I do, actually. Oh, um, what'd you get? I, so I, I realized after we talked to Darren that I did not actually have any pinkish black vinyl or anything. So oh. I went out and I uh, got this, the pinkish black. The one that's still available? The yeah. one that is still available. <laughs> uh, it's cool because the, the vinyl is actually, it's a really cool one. It's a, uh, Ooh. you can see it. It's like, Ooh, that is pretty. Yeah, it's super cool. I love the the pinkish black PBS the logo. The PBS logo. Oh, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's so, so cool. It's great. Um, he was then, he was awesome, man. He was he was. I didn't know what to expect at all. I'd never talked to him before. And then I had to get red. a shirt. So you I got, also got a shirt. Might as well. You know? Might as yeah, well. Right. Exactly. And that's some quick shipping. Super quick, right? Way to go, bud. The vinyl was on eBay. Okay. Uh, and then the uh, shirt was. Just through their band camp. Their band camp. Yeah. Wow. They didn't somebody. Them, they didn't ship it themselves, so uh, they definitely have a fulfillment company. They got somebody doing fulfillment. Yeah, for sure. That'd yeah. be nice. That's my number one complaint. I would, uh, before anything else, a tour booker. <laughs> I don't. The first thing, if I added support, would be sh fulfillment, shipping fulfillment. fulfillment. Yes. <laughs> I know Maybe people. you just need to Shopify. Yeah, you know people. You yeah, know? I'll, I'll talk to you. Yeah. I know All people right. that can do that. So we put him off twice already. So let's just go ahead. Okay. So yes, let's listen to this. Dead exaltation. I will say there is a twist, and that twist is that uh -oh. they are from uh, Pune, India. Oh, Ooh, really? Nice. So I have seen plenty of Indian metal, but I have never seen you know this variety of people getting gutted and huh. and Pune. like super gory. I don't oh know yes. What. I don't know. I what usually have to turn is... into like um, what's banger TV to see stuff like that. <laughs> uh, seriously, this is like some Cannibal Corpse type stuff. Oh, banger TV. Um, all right. Hey, those are there's some good dudes. So what we're gonna hear is a song called "Coerced Sewer Ingest." Oh, that sounds fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like this seems like it's gonna be shoegaze. Yeah, I think so. I think it might be. Yeah. It's Indian folk rock. Indian folk rock. <laughs> um, no, it's going to be gross is what I hope. I hope it's gross. Hope it should, so. it should better be, gross. be gross. Here we go. I would say as advertised. Nice. I, I, 
Not your it thing? was definitely as advertised. No, I wouldn't say it's not my thing. I I actually kind of like the music. Yeah, the, that snare was out there. Well, those, like it was really up there. I mean, um, but those are pro- those are programmed or triggers or they're not. I think they have a drummer, so they're probably not programmed. But yeah, um, I, no, I I I liked the music. I that wasn't into this stuff's really big in that area. Actually, yeah. uh, we used to manage a band from santa cruz that toured out there oh wow like really you guys are going to like that that india like like south asia and stuff and like and then like we got the offers and they were like (laughs) they were were good dude they were drawn they drew like over 500 a night oh my gosh yeah and like that there's like a big slam death scene out there I think that's probably another example of that dominant culture with a really strong counterculture. Yeah, probably, probably. pushing back against it. And well, and they're probably twenty or thirty years behind the United States in terms of kind of like adoption of Western pop culture music and stuff. Um, yeah. not really with the no, the, the, not really with the slam and death. I mean, they're pretty on par with what's they're going on, on everywhere mm-hmm. else. Yeah. But is this like yeah. the first time around for that? That's my thing. Is like that's yeah. that's existed here for you know I, a bit. But yeah, since I, the eighties. Yeah. yeah. But like, I don't. I I I was shocked to learn about this as well, and I would have never known that if we didn't manage a slam band. What I remember, yeah. I remember talking to Sasha Dunable <clears throat> when Intronaut went and did a run of shows in south asia and he said the exact same thing man like i get to go to south asia and the offers were bonkers so it's like all right i'll go play intranet he said like (laughs) the tour was rocky like you know there were definitely you know problems and everything didn't go super smooth but the shows were incredible yeah i mean i've managed we've managed a few death and slam bands and like it's been like everyone like we I mean, we managed a pretty big slam band, so like, it we were just kind of too. We were just kind of a younger company and couldn't. We weren't ready to handle an international band at yeah. the time. Yeah, that's and, a different. And ingested from the UK. Oh yeah. And like they were doing tours with like Crowbar and all those bands in Europe, and like, it's just it, it was just too much at the time. But yeah. Everybody says the same thing. South Asia, they just love slam and death. Interesting. I wonder if that's yeah. the same reason like hardcore is huge in South Korea right now. Oh, it's huge, especially straight edge hardcore. It's really yeah. big there. Yeah. And then like But I mean Sto- Have you guys and- ever seen Sepultura? I mean Brazil. I've never seen them live, no. Oh my god. It was one of the weirdest concerts I've ever been to. But like that's brazil they love that i mean that's their band yeah you know yeah well malaysia has a huge um like stoner and doom scene including homegrown bands so i always wonder like you know, really some kind of yeah some kind of like whatever and and artists too so like the guy who did our second album cover is from malaysia and there's like i can mm. think of like eight to ten artists that are regularly producing Dude, you guys album always art. have you guys Every one of your releases has good album covers, like good artwork. Yeah, I'm obsessed with the. I'm obsessed <laughs> with the, the art. I, it's one but of my like, fav- favorite things. I kind of wondered because like Malaysia comes up on our numbers a lot from yeah. streaming, mm. and like I'm like, how the hell are the people listening to us in Malaysia? I, I, apparently, people like it. Then I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a there's a band that actually like hit the doom charts last year called some variation of marijuana marijuana or something like that. That's from I think from Malaysia. That was kick ass. Marijuana. So, so it's not even just like local bands. There they have bands that are kind uh, of gra- graduating. I just I wish that I could get like, I wish when I get my numbers I could see like the people that listen to me. Yeah. I don't want to stalk them, but I want to know. I'm curious. <laughs> oh, yeah. F- f- hit, reach out to one of the artists and find out like, cause I, you know, there's a little bit of a language barrier, so it was kind of tricky, but I, I did pump them for a little bit of information. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how it landed there, but it's got a pretty decent sized following. It feels like you could do a cool 
cool tour in Malaysia yeah. if, if you wanted to. It is funny because you um, do want to know. You want to like reach out and be like, how did you find us? Uh, Why do you like us? I do is that. that a thing over there? Yeah, I do that all the time with music. Is it a Can bot you... farm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what yeah you, just a bot farm That's what Malaysia. you assume half the yeah, time. exactly. Oh, we got a, we got a record order – last last week or the week before from russia and i was like where'd you find us like dude russia's know. pop russia pops up like they love they love music everybody yeah. i know that's played in russia like it's sketchy but like <laughs> like yeah. conan conan almost got like stuck in russia yeah <laughs> but like everybody says the same thing russia is like the shows are awesome yeah was it andy that said that was when they finished up the tour, the insect arc was insect on arc, yeah. right at the p- beginning of the pandemic. They had Russia <sighs> shows. So like we had a one show in they Russia. They had one big money show in do Russia. Do we go play it or do we go home? Or do we go home? Because we could get stuck there. You go, you <laughs> go home. They, yeah. went, they went home and they got you go home. home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. we, have, we have one more song. One and, more. And it is the band camp Ooh. pick. And I am fascinated we're not going to talk about it too much okay. until after we it. listen i'm just going to tell you the artist is named nick shoulders and huh. the song that we're going to listen to i believe is called miss the mississippi and you oh oh please tell me this is delta blues So I'll pause this one real quick. I actually want to listen to a little bit of another one. But so the background, Nick Shoulders rise to punk country stardom and the crop of fans flocking to his YouTube performances began in the middle of the pandemic. There was a video of him that emerged singing, whistling and yodeling an an old song in a wood paneled hallway of an old New Orleans corner store that went completely viral. And then people dug in. Um, but his deal is he grew up in the South, not surprisingly, uh, influenced by Southern Baptist gospel singing. Um, he prefers to call it grandpa music, not country. He draws from honky <laughs> tonk and traditional country. Definitely. But the real core of everything is that sort of gener- yeah. generational tangent that I carry with, with my voice from so many different parts of my family. Mm. Uh, he said, okay. being an outlaw in the South means being at odds with a theocratic repressive culture that wants to squash you, doesn't want you to exist. And more specifically, doesn't want you to be happy. So Hmm. he's like got a brightly colored mullet and he wears crazy clothes and he's sings this like old outlaw country. He's just like, yeah, it looks like so. he's a liberal, liberal outlaw country. I love it. Exactly. Well, I mean, look, I saw a meme today that that uh <laughs> the outlaw country it was out- like it was like yeah. a guy in a blue line, in I a see blue line t-shirt yeah. it's all it's over. like i love outlaw <laughs> country and the police and the police <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, man oh uh, this is you know, really cool yeah so the you know, public like i, I know i, I started really laughing got... but like when i laugh sometimes it's it's because i'm I mean, i'm really fucking on. into it yeah. yeah that yodel was cool you know, know I'm a that. I'm huge into Robert Johnson. Oh man! So man. like this kind of stuff, like I always think of Robert Johnson, and uh, yeah, I mean it's got a little bit of that. I mean, I always tell everyone everything comes from Robert Johnson. Yeah. So 
the devil yeah. yeah so he's you know from the ozarks i think he recorded his record in arkansas i mean lives in lives in new orleans now so that was kind of like a sweet kind of classic old love song but we have songs called john brown's nightmare so i believe we're going to be getting into john some Brown. into some territory uh home, home on the rage home on the rage the only other song that that's up right now is called turn on the dark so i was going to play oh, so this album's not out yet no this is not out it's vocals guitars whistles bass harmonies and mandolin wow just 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 him and another dude and that's it and i think the other out his previous albums which were out already and are now getting a ton of attention are with the full band mm. That guitar sound is so Robert Johnson, though. Yeah, yeah. We worry more than most at the mercy of ghosts. Still can't you tell by the way we stare? Every moment or two, always open too soon. Another cold breath to raise a hair. Lend an ear to the ground and hold. you turn on the dark I'm yelling out in fright turn on the dark I pray for endless night it was never my choice there ain't an end in sight turn on the dark as I'm afraid of the light oh won't you turn I dig this. I'm super. Now, that's a lot. That's more me. Uh, the less yeah. yodel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you can't see the cover, but if you want to talk about a, you know, a guy who's trying to stir up some shit, it's a, it's like a cartoon, <laughs> cartoon drawing of him. Um, you know, the dude with the mullet in a, with a pink hat and a pink mask on and a pink shirt with like flowers growing out of him. It looks like he's dead. And on, on this nicely illustrated cover, we have a thermometer with the t- 98.6 on it. We have a cop car on fire <laughs> <laughs> with help spray painted <laughs> on the side of it. So, oh. so I can tell the South loves him. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> they should if they love outlaws because, like you right? said, that's what an outlaw is right now. <laughs> yeah. Fucking A. I, who was it? One of the race car drivers. One of the, like, Dale, er- Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah. Or, said something like i i think these boys all forgot about you know why we you know what outlaws really are you know why do we soup up these cars and learn how to race yeah to run away from the police because we were doing (laughs) we were doing bad shit like nascar was invented (laughs) during the prohibition yeah they were uh, loading them up with alcohol yeah they were running booze they were running booze yeah exactly that don't even get me started on yeah, politics and common sense. Yeah, we yeah. won't we won't go there. Yeah, we don't need, not that kind yeah, of Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> we don't need to tonight. Let's just let's just say I see I see you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I see you. I hear you. Well, so normally to to wrap up, we talk about kind of like your hometown heroes and you know your you know favorite early bands from where he came Ooh. from. But you, you sort of hit that already in the first yeah. segment a little bit. Well, I don't I mean, know. If, you know, we didn't do though. What? I think Josh has some stuff to give away. Oh shit! Oh, I heard I heard about this. Did yeah. you come up with the contest? Because I sure as fuck no. didn't. No. <laughs> I don't care. We don't care if it's a contest. We don't care how you guys want to do it. But um, to people that support your guys's your guys's show and watch this, um, we're going to give away a shirt and a shirt and record to somebody. You guys just choose who who it is and nice. let me know the size and and we'll send it out to them. Awesome. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just uh, when you post on the Facebook, the on the Facebook, on the Facebook, when you post on Facebook this Grandpa. episode, uh, comment. Uh, yeah, I want you to go. I want you to go listen to the to the worship album on Spotify. Follow them and Spotify just, Bandcamp. We don't care. Yeah, yeah uh, comment with with your favorite song off the album. There you go. And I'm not. And I there won't. You go. Put, I won't put that in the description. So they will have had to listen all the way to yeah. Here. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's, uh, it's yeah. We, I was. We just uh, 
we like to promote that stuff and uh i mean our records are i have a bunch of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah killer well when you're not touring <laughs> all right so yeah so so comment on the on the facebook post or the insta or if you're only on on ig on, on the, the insta? In, instagram post and whoever the hits instagram. it first yeah, go so time also, um, we have a bunch of cool stuff coming up and, yeah let's uh, hear it. Yeah, let's, talk, let's talk about unfortunately it. the one the one that i would like to share with everybody Uh-oh. i can't share till may 5th Damn. okay but let's just say we are going into the studio in july and um there's going to be a song that comes out on something pretty cool. Oh, that, um, I know what you're some talking of us, about. Some of us may have, uh, some of us may have uh, purchased something from bands like Sleep that have done the same kind of cool things. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, look for that May fifth, and we're going to the studio with Mr. S- Scott Evans in July. Nice. So, okay. That's but we are awesome. recording a full length as well. So. And then hopefully tour to support it. And then hopefully play some shows. <laughs> play some shows. Well, we are doing a cool festival. Soon. That's right. In JD's hometown. Oh, yeah. So, Which one? Which fest? They're doing Crucial. Oh, you guys are playing Crucial? Yeah. And Dope. we'll be touring out there and back. That's September, and, right? Uh, end of August. Oh, it, end of August. Yeah. 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 And then... Uh, uh, other than well, that, we recorded we recorded a another we self recorded a EP well a one song I guess it would be considered a single or an EP I don't know it's a sixteen minute song so that's, a, that's an EP want. yeah because <laughs> we were bored during this um, pandemic and we decided to do something that's uh, we already talked about Nine Inch Nails so. Um, just pretty much kind of think about what would happen if Nine Inch Nails and Sun did a collab. Nice. And okay. I'll that's think. what we decided to do. Sounds like something I'd like. That sounds like fun. Hey, and I don't know if you, you I'm sure you probably saw for yourself and for your bands that when Psycho sort of announced they're going to have to shuffle things around, they kind of opened the door and said, hey, if you want to play at Psycho, let us know. Really? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> yeah, we're we're working on that, but yeah, uh, yeah and uh, also uh, just you know, like uh, we have a bunch of stuff. There's going to be a bunch of bands on tour. Hopefully, like the world's opening up in like September, we're getting a lot of offers. Um, our bands are getting offers, so hopefully, we can all be seeing each other soon. I know, yes. I know. It feels like we're getting there. Did we're you, getting there. Did you get any any of your vaccine stabs yet? I've been vaccinated for a little while now. Yeah. Oh, nice. But we're kind of, um, me and my wife are considered healthcare workers because of our youngest daughter. Oh, okay. Mm. So, um, so she has like a very complex medical, she's very complex medically. Gotcha. So we were considered healthcare workers because, um, my yeah, wife, was... we get, yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of people that if you directly care for someone who, who needs the protection because they can't get it themselves. Then you get, then you get up in line. Yeah. I so mean, we're very all, lucky. That's Our awesome. Band's actually vaccinated. That's, oh, wow. And, that's uh, great. I don't know if you guys seen, we just uh, dropped a song in the CCS commercial. Oh yeah. For the skateboarders out there. Yeah, I yes. saw that. I saw that too. Yeah. That's something new. Yeah. That's, that's right. Something new for us all to get in. And, but, uh, our singer is also, uh, if you guys ever want to get another side of an industry, our singer is, He's like the brand manager for Santa Cruz skateboards. Right. Oh, nice. And was a pro skater for years. So uh, it's a pretty cool. I, I know JD was talking about skateboarding in one of the episodes I see. Oh, yeah. I mean, so yeah. I grew up in the middle of it here as a completely mediocre t- <laughs> to shitty skateboarder, but I love doing it, but I just was terrible. Yeah. And yes, we embrace, and... <laughs> we embrace the skateboard and sport cult like the bicycle bikes and yeah all that stuff and you know it's it. given us it's given it's a it's given us quite a bit so yeah i can i can imagine i can imagine i feel like i feel like there's a that's something that bands don't think about 
as much as they should or could if they really want to promote heavily is like adjacent industries. One that I should probably invest more time into is the beer business Mm, because there's so much crossover between drinking beer and playing metal. (laughs) um, Yeah, we got that too. Yeah. So, yeah. What's what's that? Is that a liquid death? Yeah. Okay. Nice. (laughs) Yeah, they, Uh, they, they do as well. Well, that's killer. Yeah. yeah it's so, nice to have, I mean, have some support. The people that I know that have endorsements that are, that are, have been able to continue, especially cash endorsements. Um, that's what's, <laughs> what's that's that? what's kept them. Before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I know a few <laughs> product, know a few people that have, have actual money endorsements and like, that's how they wrote out the pandemic. Yeah. I, I with... have a, I have a few, I know a few guys like that. And it's a, it's insane. Like I, I obviously can't name names, but like the, uh, like hearing guys doing deals that are like, they get paid for their signature instruments. Like, Mm. like they don't get paid. Like, cause normally the way that stuff works is when you sell, when they like a company like ESP or whoever sells an instrument, that's your signature model. You usually get like 10, 15% from each sell. Well, like there's a new thing. There's some guys that literally like, they don't get it from when it sells. Like if a company like ESP or Schecter, whoever it is making it, if they make a, if they make 5,000 of them, they get their percentage on how many they make Before right they away. Wow. Have to sell. Wow. Before wow. they even hit the stores. Well, and that's, that's like, that's how you see certain guys driving like Ferraris and Lambos that are like, <laughs> dude, your band's not even that big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's I've been the- doing, that's what I've been doing a lot during this pandemic. I've been working a lot with some, driving Ferraris uh, and Lambos. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Uh, or working that endorsement money. deals. Yeah. Oh, but you guys, you guys, gotcha. you guys know, you guys know what, you guys know what kind of guaranteed worship has. I mean, come on. You yeah. guys are rake, <laughs> raking it, raking in. it in. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I've no. been doing a lot of work with some companies, and uh, that's and, good. And it's it's been really fun, and I've got cool gear from it, so yeah, pretty right. happy with that. Well, as much as I like to knock a company like Monster and like the 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 whole vibe of Monster Energy, they support a shit ton of musicians. Oh, they totally do. Like a a, a metric shit ton, and people who aren't. They used to support names. my old band, so yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't. I can't stand energy drinks, but um, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we take it on tour. <laughs> You'll put it on stage. Yeah. <laughs> we also used to get these. Like we also used to get these books of of like coupons for free burritos and stuff at chipotle oh damn <laughs> nice and like and like uh we have bands that are on our roster they have taco bell cards oh my god like it looks like a credit card that says taco bell on it and you just slide oh. it and don't have to pay for food oh i'd kill for that see that hey bands you want some good management reach out to josh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if you're i don't know if you're taking new artists or not but uh um bands i don't get this all the time i yeah. get lucky sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But I Dude. will brag about it when I get lucky that one yeah. time. Yeah. A Taco Bell card would be fuck. And like, if you've never been on tour, you and especially like you know a DIY tour, or, or even if you have some support and a little bit of money or whatever, a fucking Chipotle or a Taco Bell c- card could like make tour because that keeps you from eating chips and fucking potted meat at the gas station, which is the typical. Unless you got a buyout. Potted yeah. Meat. Yeah. Unless you have a buyout, man, you just, you just like oh, swipe that. Ta- How many days in a row can I eat Taco Bell? That's a, that's a question I would like to answer sometime. Yeah. On somebody else's time. <laughs> on somebody and not only that, when, when you tour the U S there's one, there's one thing I guarantee you, you're going to find a Taco Bell or McDonald's. Yeah. Or Subway. Like, or Subway. You're gonna get so sick of eating those that like yeah. anything will do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, dude, I'm glad we got to do this. I, I've been like I said, you guys are like my new like Monday night, Monday during nice. the day watch. That's so, so great to hear. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, hoping we can bring some live music back to this area yeah, soon. Exactly, hell, please. Hell yeah! No, and have we'll you guys have... heard anything about um, venues in San Jose? Well, uh, besides would, the X bar, I mean, we'll see what the general um, consensus is, and that can be county specific. But the governor just announced yesterday that if everything stays the way it is, everything will be wide open by June fifteenth in California. I know we have um, starting 
this month there's percentages that are allowed open at some of the venues in Santa Cruz, but like the percentage is so so yeah. like little people allowed in there, like we can't even play in there. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, it's like a lot of the but, bigger uh, venues. Well, that's why yeah. the X bar is an interesting spot because you actually kind of could run a show with reduced capacity there. It's a big enough room that you could sort of get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, Dep depends on how shows. much it was reduced. But like the blue, like the blue lagoon, we can't play until it's like we can't play there for a while because yeah. we we at Santa Cruz is actually a place we do well, but yeah. uh, like. I mean, we might be able to pull it off at the atrium when things are cool, but uh, I'm just like swamp. Like we want to do like some more stuff in the in our area before we, you know, to bring it back. We I would like I would love to actually be able to do some sort of fest of like our oh, yeah. area bands and oh, yeah. even if it was a benefit to one of the struggling venues that we have right now. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm down we i'm sure we'll end up putting together I, i'm just not trying to get too ahead of it i'll just i'll let it come and then we'll plan something after that Dude, see that's my the... i'm so used to my brain and the industry like i'm thinking i i already have we already have stuff going for fall of 2022 so yeah wow it's yeah, it's that's uh, smart it's that's crazy. <laughs> well, not not for, not for my band. My band don't play that this far now. But, yeah, but for the other bands. I like bands. to, yeah, for the other bands. For yeah. the bands that um, actually do more than me. <laughs> ah, oh. ah. Hope everybody's okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, it was good to catch up with yeah, you. Yeah, so great. Good to talk to you. Yeah. And I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we'll see you in person definitely this year and hopefully, you know, summertime or something when, when people Absolutely, are. Absolutely. For cause, sure. Um, cause Maybe we, in Salt Lake. We got to. We got to play another show together yeah, somewhere. I'm down. We need to practice first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're so <laughs> close, though. Once the four of us are all vaccinated, then all bets are off. We brushed off the rest last week. Yeah. We got How'd to it go? get together. I'm a little nervous. How'd it go? Actually, we did. Um, it was a little rough, the first song, but then we played through our, our, our record and played some of our new songs. Um some of our new songs took a little warming up i mean like i i actually use all six strings on my guitar oh and look playing at you. like arpeggios and stuff <laughs> like i'm not like i'm actually like i'm, I'm actually serious about this one like we yeah. actually play arpe arpeggios in our new songs oh wow and that, so that'll like, be fun yeah we're um trying to say like, we don't have to just play slow <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like we can actually. We wanted to write a song where we can actually show that we know how to play our instruments. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, but it's uh, not, it not went just, well. Not just tone and vibe. But it's also some notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe not a John Maybe. Five level of notes, but like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of space between there's a lot of space between tunnels and john yes. and john five yes so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome but, all right you man. know we're also we're we're also okay. vaccinated so yeah Damn. you know but yeah nice. let's do this let's do right. this guys let's have fun yes we'll definitely put something together definitely thanks a, a definitely return to music and we'll fest. talk later yep we'll maybe, sure. have a, maybe we'll have to have a gear talk so we don't bore jd yeah, yeah. I, I kind of figured we would, but then we didn't end up going down that that path. So maybe we'll maybe we'll do a Gear Talk spinoff series. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. There we go. The awesome. sustain was losing me a little bit, but you know, no. oh, the sustain. <laughs> the sustain talk. Oh, uh, yeah, you haven't, the... you haven't smoked any weed. That's why. <laughs> that's it. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. The, the uh, I, all I, I'm gonna have to drop in the Spinal Tap. Yeah. <laughs> the sustain scene from Spinal Tap when he's looking uh, at the guitars. Then we'll definitely get a pull down there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Sweet. All right, guys. Have a good one. Take Have care. a killer night. Thanks, Josh. All Stay right. safe. Good night, See guys. You. Bye. Bye. All right. Mr. Josh. That's our first like uh artist management. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, it's the first time. Yeah. I mean, I think probably we have a lot of bands who are listeners i would imagine yeah. and, and a lot of bands who've never had representation before so it's probably a little bit you know interesting to hear you know that that side of things talking and, about and, the branding yeah and, and what they do for you what a what a good manager does for you yeah one, one thing that came up over and over again that a good manager does for you is he puts your band before his band yep i mean and that's definitely josh's ethos like oh completely like he he did his time 
in a touring band yeah. and he like lived that part and understands it and he's good he's good with yeah. what he did and he's happy to keep playing shows but i think that was a really intelligent um explanation a semi-professional band when we do something we're going to do it just like a professional band does but we just recognize the reality that we're not going to be on tour six months a year we're not or, doing it to try is, to support ourselves like yeah. which is what i mean you can make a living online good but uh but I, I think that's good because it's a sign that he's taking care of his. I mean, look, if he's getting you Taco Bell cards, he's fucking <laughs> taking care of business. Well, I don't think anybody was getting Taco Bell cards. Didn't you make that up? No, he said it. Oh, I thought he said Chipotle. Well, he said Chipotle, oh. and then he said Taco Bell <laughs> cards. He said they have a little card that looks like a credit card, oh but, it's a, but it's a Taco Bell that's card. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. See that? They get you some Liquid Death, some Monster, some Chipotle and Taco Bell. Oh, man. My, my life would be good. Just living on Taco Bell and Monster Energy? And well, No, Liquid Death. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take just water. No, fine. the Liquid Death. I emailed, I emailed Liquid Death. Oh, yeah? They never emailed me back. About what? About the podcast. Oh, coming on? I want some water, man. Oh. No, not coming on. Just I, drinking water on the podcast and saying, we like Liquid uh, Death. We I, like Liquid Death. I do think it would be interesting, though, to have somebody from that side Actually, on. Actually, it would. Like the artist rep people from like uh, Orange or you know, yeah. people that do a lot of um, endorsements and sponsorships. I would love to chat with one of those people about Let's do why, it. Why, did they get, why did they get into that? What's the, what's the behind wanting to support? How do they choose underground bands? How do they choose? I would love to know that. I mean, is there like a certain level of followers that they look on on social media? I I knew there was um there was a big departure because the the guy who was running endorsements and kind of artist um representation at Orange Amplifiers Mm. the in the U.S. just left Orange, Mm. and he I mean he was like kind of a legend in terms of signing people and taking care of artists he was like a legendary you know artist friendly dude yeah. i'm curious to see because if you if you're looking around at all orange of all of the instrument and amp companies is w- way on top of the endorsements yeah I mean, oh 100 fucking there's all, so many of all of, it's like ubiquitous orange orange and like stoner and doom at least orange is orange is the brand and and that's partially because they endorse so many artists. And sometimes it's just for a discount. Sometimes it's like full blown free gear deals and stuff. And sometimes it's actual. Like Brent Hines probably gets money. I'm oh, guessing he probably gets paid. Matt Matt Pike probably gets making money. The dough, yeah. Making the dough, making the dough. Get that cheddar. Yeah. I mean, I will say I, I knew someone who I won't name, who was an artist in a band that you would probably recognize yeah. but is not mainstream at all who's getting like three grand a month from monster for really yeah for for, for really. really yes for really <laughs> you gotta be for joking me <laughs> yeah you're joking me you're joking me i can't believe my eyes i'll do my oogie boogie man oh man that's too good all right everybody um, well hey I'm actually, as I mentioned, maybe going away for a week. But, hey, we banked enough episodes that we will keep you humming all the way through. There will be no gaps in delivery of pleasurable audio. And uh, then I'll come back and you won't even know I was gone. I, I was going to tell you something because I don't know if oh. you read this article. No, oh, which... There was an article about Bandcamp and Billboard. Oh, no. And the founder, Ethan Diamond, who was talking about he was he was doing this interview with the guy from Billboard. And I was reading the article and I noticed something that came up that you have mentioned multiple times on this on this podcast. What? I would love to get on Ethan. I mean, yeah, that yeah. would be incredible. So he said that he was doing it, it talked about like what he was wearing during his interview and he was wearing a band from a uh formerly well-known Bay Area band, really niche Blue Chunks. <laughs> nice. Yes. So he was doing the interview in a Blue Chunks t-shirt. <laughs> That's killer. Well, a couple of those guys are still around and still really active and play in other bands like Brew Baker and Johnny Axtell and that there's um there there are dudes from you know, Joaquin Spangeman who is the drummer um is still playing in a bunch of bands and is, you know, actually Johnny Axtell wasn't in Blue Chunks, but Joaquin mm. Joaquin was in in Blue Chunks and uh you know, and band camps in Oakland, they're yeah. they're pretty hooked into the you know, and those dudes are all old enough to have jobs where they'd be doing you know professional work with a company like they're not twenty, they're they're grown ups. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not twenty. <laughs> it, it, it would it would make sense that he's connected to a variety, you know, yeah. a, a, a range of people that were part of that 
that scene. That's rad though. Yeah. Completely. I mean, that's, it's niche, but it, it, what it, what it shows you sort of is, yeah, they had one album and yeah, they weren't around that long, but mm. the stamp that they put on the Bay area was fucking gigantic. Yeah. Like, they were ubiquitous for, for the period of time that they were active. It was just like, all this fucking band yeah. <laughs> they're gonna do something Which is, there, it's an interesting story too it's kind of like operator generator where the singer just mm. for what i i forget what the story was but his girlfriend or wife had to move or was moving to texas and he just uh, sort of went went with her Blue and, and I, yeah the, right the singer from the blue and i think he's lived a good, a ha- good happy life not being in a band but man it felt like they were about to blow up yeah and then it just poof they just disappeared it's crazy so crazy all right, All right, everybody. So if you listen, remember, uh, comment get first on IG or Facebook and yeah, get, get a wor- uh, worship T-shirt. Just tell us what worship song you enjoy. Yeah, there you and, go. Um, or just say you like worship and you want the record. Just say you like worship as you long like as you're first. And the shirt, yeah. So uh, that's good Good stuff. Yeah. This has been another episode of, of Blind, Blind Submissions. Submissions. Is it weird that we didn't? I mean, you did. I didn't. Thanks for joining us for another week of Blind Submissions. See episode description for links to all artists discussed in this episode and visit their sites to support them directly by buying music and merch. Share links to the podcast or YouTube videos with your friends, especially if they're in bands. Bands! If you want us to listen to your music on a future episode, please submit one song to blindsub at gmail.com. That is blindsub, B-L-Y-N-D-S-U-B at gmail.com. Bandcamp links preferred, but not required. Find us on social media at Blind Submissions. Full video episodes are available on our YouTube. Remember, we go in blind so you don't have to. Blind Submissions. Blind Submissions.